Hey everybody, how's it going? Bear with me for a sec. I don't think I've ever started a Spaces before. I'm a little bit of a boomer. I think I got it. Tony and I and the rest of the steering committee thought it would be a good idea to set up this space so that we could uh, go through the form that the debtors put up on the docket, I guess on Tuesday or Wednesday, regarding the borrowers and the different options that exist under that form that the borrowers should have received. I guess it was on, on Wednesday. Now, I've heard from you, Tony, and from other people that some borrowers didn't get it, and it was when they checked their spam, uh, they found it. So I guess the first point is, is that if you haven't received a notice from Stretto regarding the repayment of the loan, you should check your spam. And if it's not there, you should reach out to Stretto ASAP because the deadline to make the election is next Wednesday at midnight or 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's number one. Make sure you have the notice from Stretto and you need to get that form back by next Wednesday if you are intending to either repay or refinance your loan. So let's talk about the notice itself. Now it's a little bit confusing and I'll admit that when I read it for the first time, uh, I was confused as to how they structured it. It was only when I read it the second time that I saw the way they structured it uh, in terms of the election. You can think of it that you have really three, three types of elections uh, that you can make. You can either do nothing, in which case uh, your loan or what the debtors refer to as a retail advance obligation, but will be automatically set off against your claim on the effective date. That's option one. Option two, if you, if you look at the election form, allows the borrower to repay the retail advance obligation. And what that means is that the borrower would repay the loan directly before the effective date. And the debtor has indicated that they will essentially allow borrowers to repay the loans between January 21st and January 26th. I think those those were, that's the window for repaying the loan. The third option, which I think most people are looking at, is to refinance your loan. So if you look at item two, it says you can either agree to repay your loan, and then there's a there's a, another box that you can check off that is the refinancing election. And if you check that box off, it says, I would like to refinance my loan. I understand that the refinancing process will begin on or after the anticipated effective date of the plan. And by making this election, if the refinance transaction is consummated, I will not receive the liquid cryptocurrency distribution I otherwise would be entitled to receive under the plan. Now, I think what they're referencing there is that by making the refinance election, you will be uh, obtaining refinance through a third party lender. And in this notice, they indicate that the third party lender is essentially gonna get your distribution under the plan in connection with the refinancing of the loan. So I, I wanted to make clear that for those parties that are refinancing, uh, when you get to item two, look at it and check off the box on refinancing election. If you, if you accidentally check off the repayment election, you will be expected to repay the loan before January 27th. And if you don't make that repayment, you will be subjected to the set off treatment. So uh, it's a little bit confusing, but for those parties who wish to refinance, the appropriate box to check is the refinancing election. So that's item two of the notice. Uh, item three is the election about what type of crypto uh, you wish to receive, and you're given the choice of either Bitcoin or ETH uh, to check off. And obviously that, would, that choice is presumably, if you're repaying your loan, dependent upon what the collateral was that you used in connection with your loan, presumably for tax reasons. Item four is a number of certifications that the borrower is requested to make. And you should read those very carefully. That basically summarizes what I've said regarding the refinance versus the repayment election. And then item five is just name, signature, address, and 
you know, the date that you completed it. Um, for the people who submit it, you should be receiving a confirmation. I've seen a couple of those confirmations. It, you should, when you get that confirmation, you should go through it and make sure that it's accurate. And if you are intending to refinance your loan, make sure that the confirmation indicates that you've checked off refinance rather than repayment uh, and make sure that your form of crypto that you requested is accurately stated. So I guess that's, you know, the, the highlights of the form. Tony, I encourage you to, you know, ask me any questions if you feel that uh, I jumped over anything or anyone else. All right. So first point for the people that can't find their, the email or they haven't received it, maybe it went to spam. The email that the subject line of the email is very spam ish. Yeah. So whoever wrote this email, <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations to you. But it starts off as urgent and important information regarding mm -hmm. Celsius loan. It's like you they took that straight from a spam email, right? I, mean, I yeah, I got that at like four AM. When I woke up at like seven, I saw it, I immediately deleted it and I was like, wait a minute. And then I went back, I was like, wait, this might be legit. But yeah, so just search Stretto on the uh the, the subject line or the search line uh, whatever email you have or you could just look up urgent and important information you can look up celsius loan refinancing um, but it should be there if it's not there not really sure what your options are because there's a password that they give you that is unique to each borrower so without that password you won't be able to go to the uh, to the the website to log in and to vote uh, let me see here so if you didn't receive it there's celsius inquiries at stretto.com you can email them and then maybe they can send you another email. But basically, if you look through the email, there's a hyperlink that says here, H-E-R-E -E in caps. That's going to take you to the uh, the login page. You're just going to copy your login uh, password and then it's going to take you to the actual, uh, I guess, ballot, whatever you want to call it. Election form. Election form. Uh, the election form, as has been the case basically for everything that these guys have done, is very, very uh, lawyery. There's a ton of words. The first, like, I don't know, 11 pages are just legal disclaimers. It's kind of telling you what your options are, how everything's going to go, typical stuff like that, how everything works. And then if you go down to page 15 of the uh, document, that's when it gives you an actual breakdown of your, uh, of your loan details. And then, you know, that's in item one. Item two is the voting, as we described. And then item three is if you want to elect to receive it in Bitcoin or ETH. That's that part is pretty straightforward. I think the repayment portions, they broke it up a little bit complicated. So they gave us three options, right? Technically four, but let's say three options. Right. The first option is you want to repay the loan yourself in full. So if you're repaying in full, it doesn't matter how much your loan amount is, you can repay it in full. And then in option in item three, you can pick either Bitcoin or ETH, whatever you want your uh, collateral returned as. The second option is you're going to repay the principal yourself, but you're going to make a partial repayment. And they're only allowing that if you have 25,000 in principal or more. So if you're at like five grand, you can either pay it all or you can refinance or set off. You can't pay a portion of it. I'm not sure why they picked that number, but you know, just one of those things. And then you can elect to refinance. And then down the line, you can choose which lender you're going to go with. The biggest question that a lot of people had is with preferences. Yep. And it looks like we're all kind of screwed with preferences. Actually, let's talk about that. So it's it's a little unusual the way that they set it up, but I've gotten a lot of inquiries about this. If you actually read the notice that they have uh, that they circulated uh, in the legal mumble jumble before you get to the actual election form, it talks about the, the preference exposure uh, and the preference settlement. And if you are electing the refinance option, there's a paragraph, it's on page six of the notice that says, please take further notice that account holders with withdrawal preference exposure above $100,000 who make the refinancing election must resolve their withdrawal preference exposure by making a settlement payment or otherwise resolving their preference exposure with the litigation administrator before the refinancing process can be completed. Now here's the, the next line. Because the refinancing process will begin after the effective date, account holders with withdrawal preference exposure greater than $100,000 can make their settlement payments after the effective date. The plan administrator and the litigation administrator will have the discretion to set a deadline 
by which withdrawal preference exposure must be settled to participate in any refinancing with a third party lender and such settlement payments must be be made. Um, the plan administrator will communicate any such deadlines to applicable account holders with at least two weeks notice. So what it's saying there is that if you elect the refinancing election, you don't have to make the settlement payment on the withdrawal preference exposure by the by the deadline. In other words, that you know, the, the, the deadline for resolving the withdrawal preference exposure will be after the effective date, you know, at a time that will be established by either the plan administrator or the litigation administrator. Tony, from your discussions with people, did they understand that that issue? I'm not sure I even understood that issue. So 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 if we missed the deadline, right, they're going to set us off and then we're out of luck, or we can still elect to refinance, and then the refinance will occur once we've settled or once we've figured out what we're doing with preferences? I think, the, I think the latter. So if you take the situation, let's just take a hypothetical where you have a borrower uh, with a million dollar claim and a half a million dollar loan outstanding, and that person has preference exposure. My The way that I think this works is that the person is given a deadline uh, to make the preference settlement payment uh, under the other notice that was sent out before the effective date. If you check off the box that you want to refinance, this paragraph says that that account holders can make their settlement payments after the effective date. So it appears that uh, for, for, for those people who wish to keep uh, their loans and not be subject to the set-off treatment and have preference exposure and wish to refinance their loans, that they do not have to make the withdrawal preference settlement payment for prior to the effective date. Okay, that's good. I think I gave a lot of people a lot of bad advice, so I got to reach out to them again. But uh, all right. That's a little and I think a... I think I'm um, scrolling through it when you get to those certifications in item four or five, whatever, whatever. I think I think there's it, it says it again. So again, yet another here. Uh, maybe they didn't put it in the acknowledgments. I thought I saw it in the acknowledgments as well, but it, it, it's odd to say the least, right? I mean, I, I know that there are some borrowers out there with a preference exposure and. You know, it seems to me that uh, if you want to preserve your options of keeping your loan alive, you just simply have to check off the refinancing election. And, you know, when you do that, there's an acknowledgement that the the settlement payment will not be due before the effective date on the preference. OK, yeah, because that's one of the things I thought was a little strange about it, because they mentioned they're going to, I guess, set off from people's earned claims if they have preferences. So I'm assuming that's one of the ways we can resolve the preferences on the on the loan side, right? So basically, if you have a preference, let's say you're a borrower and you have earned and you have whatever preference amount, instead of completely losing out on the ability to refinance, you can kind of leverage, I guess, your earned claim to subtract whatever amount they want you to pay back uh, on the preference side, right? Did I explain that correctly? Yes. Okay. All right. That's pretty good. I, I think the other thing I wanted to note as well that I heard from a couple of people in the last week that for whatever reasons, and it was mentioned in court yesterday, that some people have made a error when they submitted their ballot and elected the convenience class treatment. So there was one gentleman that I spoke to who had like a million dollars of crypto sitting on the platform and accidentally checked off the convenience class treatment. Stretto has reached out to uh, some of those people, I know, but when you go through your uh, form, you definitely want to make sure that uh, you didn't check off that, accidentally check off that box, you know, when you, when you, when you voted on the plan. So one, one good thing that uh, Stretto did is they send us a uh, a PDF of what our elections were. One of the issues we all had with the original ballot is that once we submitted the ballot, we couldn't see what we actually voted for. Right. But like a lot of people voted two, three times just because they got nervous. Did I click on the uh, uh, the convenience class election? Did I do this? Did I do that? I know I did. So that's one good thing about this. You will be able to download the PDF after you uh, you voted. Right. Right. And I've seen it. I mean, it's a, a little cumbersome the the confirmation, but it does show, you know, what election you've made. It shows the other elections as well. 
and for the for the election that you actually make it it says next to it like selected or something like that but you will be able to see exactly how the how stretto is treating your claim yeah this is Aaron here just to jump in because like yeah david i did it with david and i accidentally clicked the wrong box the first time and then, that's when we yeah. got really scared so yeah and, and i was just like wow i'm one of the largest creditors so if i accidentally click the wrong box because it is quite confusing they do they don't they don't seem mutually exclusive so you really have to make sure you click that third box i think it is and then it'll say checked right. and unchecked when you get the PDF back. So just make sure, go look at that. It'll say checked and unchecked. And then, and I think that second selection doesn't really matter. But then, I mean, my, mine was been so I selected Bitcoin. So, so I have that PDF. Just, just, I just wanted to make sure people are careful about it because I messed up. Right. And, and, and just going back to the point that I mentioned earlier about the withdrawal preference uh, exposure, if you go to page two of the notice, there's... There, it basically says what I read before. It says account holders with withdrawal preference exposure above $100,000 who make the refinancing election must resolve their withdrawal preference exposure by making a settlement payment or otherwise resolving the withdrawal preference exposure with the litigation administrator before the refinancing process can be completed. Because the refinancing process will begin after the effective date, Account holders with withdrawal preference exposure greater than 100000 can make their settlement payments after the effective date. That's the first two sentences on page two of the, of, of, of the notice or the election form, excuse me. Yeah, I think, I think that's the can, gist of the questions I've got. Can I bring a little bit of an unrelated issue but something that I think is really important I wanted to just tell everyone? You know, I've been working with Tony on his calculator. And thank you so much, Tony, for doing that. It's just really important that everyone understands what their LTVs are. Because one of the things that the ad hoc that we're really scared about is that a lot of us are going to come out of this with a lower LTV. And we just want to make sure that, you know, if you have to, try to get some cash on the side to pay your loans down a little bit, right? When the money gets moved over to Lennon or whoever. Um, because, you know, you very well might want to try to get your loan down 10 or 20% to get that LTV to a safer range for the next few months. And I just think that's something people really need to be thinking about. And that's something I've been working on and I'm doing. I had a, I had a quite a large loan. I'm paying that down a little bit just to get my LTV into a safer range. Because the worst thing that, that I would see out of all this is, you know, we've suffered so much and I really don't want to see you guys get through this and then get margin called and lose all your Bitcoin. Right. And I, I'd say to that, that there are sort of two options, I think, that you could, if you wanted to get your uh, LTV down into uh, an acceptable range, you could, you could, well, uh, Actually, forget that. I was going to no, say. No, but Dave, David, wasn't there an 14? option where they could do a partial, re you could do a partial refinancing yeah, but, with Ledin? So I think, I think that's something that everyone needs to understand. You could do a full refinancing of your full loan value with, you know, the collateral they give you back, right? In which case, you arguably want to pay that loan down a little bit if you can get some cash on hand to pay that down, right? Or deposit some more Bitcoin or Ethereum into your account to get it to safer levels. Or potentially, and Tony, correct me here. And I think this is where David was going. If you don't refi the full amount of the of the loan through Ledin, you say let's refi part of it. Arguably, that'll give you a higher LTV. See, I just want everyone to be really conscious. And I know this is hard to do because we don't really know what our LTVs are yet. But that's why the most one of the most important things here is being conscious of what your LTV is and having it in a safe range. And I think that what's going to, after we get done with this discussion, the third party lenders are going to be up on the stage and, you know, you can ask them the questions about, about LTVs. I mean, if it's required that in, in a particular loan holder's case, that in order to get the refinancing that the the borrower has to make some payment to Ledin in order to, in connection with the refinancing, so that the starting LTV is not, you know, above their above their uh, criteria. So we got Peter L wanted to come up. You got a question? Yes. So like many of you, I had loans that were liquidated. The excess went into Earn. How are they treating Earn? Like for my example, I was all in ETH, so the excess went all into ETH. Are they going to 50-50 split Bitcoin and ETH to give me that back? Do I have a, an option to pick all ETH? And second of all, could I use that to fortify a loan? I think that I... Sorry, I think we muted everybody. David, are you with us? So, sorry, can can Tony, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear everybody who's on muted. Okay. So uh, I was just uh, saying that uh, in response to Peter's questions, uh, with respect to the the first issues, the first questions that he raised, which is about his election or his preference to receive Bitcoin or ETH. I don't recall any other form being sent where a creditor was asked to 
indicate their preference. Am I wrong, Tony? So you can email them if you want, you know, Bitcoin only or ETH only. Uh, they're only willing to accept the email. I think if you have over 100K and uh, there's no guarantees that they'll actually do it. Right. Uh, and with respect to your second question, I mean, I think the timing of it is important, Peter. So on your liquidated loan, where the excess was moved into earn, on the effective date, a distribution will be made on that uh, on that claim, uh, assuming there's no preference liability. And you'd be getting that crypto back, which presumably could then be used in connection with refinancing your loan uh, with a third party. Does that make sense? Yes, you could do that separately, yes. Right. Now, we haven't spoken about any of the limitations. I mean, as an earned creditor, as domestic, you'll be going through PayPal. And I forgot what the caps were in terms of a withdrawal. Uh, it might take you some time to pull it all out, depending on your size. But it's not something that, that I'm you know very familiar with because most of the borrowers are not going through that distribution mechanism. Okay, thank you. All right, I think Lawrence was next. Hello, everybody. So I did send an email and ask for Bitcoin and they did respond. And I did speak to some of the refinance companies and the concern about if Bitcoin tanked and losing and being wiped out is very present. I'm glad you mentioned that. I still don't understand what you were discussing, maybe because I got on late with regard to loan preferences and earn preferences and clawback preferences. If they if they work together, if there's beneficial, I've read on Twitter, if there's a 100% recovery that they'll pay you back the 27.5% on the clawbacks. Anyways, that's some of my thoughts. It's a good question. I don't... I. Don't know the answer to the last question, but I think the answer is probably no. If you if you agree to pay off the twenty seven and a half percent, they're probably not going to refund it to you under any circumstance. But your question, the first part of it was, you know, what if you have uh, preference exposure on the earn side? And the way that I read that provision in the election is, you know, it's it's they're looking at the the borrower's uh, preference exposure, not, you know, the preference exposure with respect to borrow or earn. And the way the notice in the election form are written is that if you choose refinance, you have to resolve that exposure before the refinancing process can be completed. Does that, does that answer? Your yeah, questions? I appreciate that very much, David. You know, these forms, one other point that I heard you all talking about, I think it was intentionally and deliberately set up so that we couldn't review our initial votes. And even with the latest emails I've received for the clawback preference and the loan, you couldn't print it out and review it. You had to accept it online. And very difficult for somebody like me that w operates off of a, an Android Fold phone, basically. I mean, they, they certainly were not looking out for the creditors in any way, shape, or form. I mean, it's funny that you say that because there are some people who, uh, I won't name, name names, but on the steering committee who were so paranoid about the, uh, the voting process that they actually filmed it. And it wasn't so much about the preference stuff. It was about accidentally, you know, hitting off the convenience class box, you know, when they have a multi-million dollar claim uh, in the case. So, yeah, I mean, it was uh, back in September, there was a lot of anxiety by borrowers about about not receiving a confirmation of their election choices when they submitted their ballot. My children and I recorded our voting video. <laughs> and... I think it was Cam who said, if somebody's going to, we get 100% recovery and somebody's going to be repaying, you should get it in writing. But good luck getting anybody to give us anything in writing. Yeah. Yep. Yep. One, one, last, one last thing on another subject. Yep. And this one could be very controversial. In court yesterday, I was not surprised at the amount of dagger throwing at Simon for his request to be repaid for some of his time and expenses. But I felt obligated to speak up. And I, I really didn't say that I was in favor of Simon. But if you listen to one of my lines that I said, between the UCC 
And white in case, Simon was the only one anybody heard. I think Simon made a direct outreach to the creditors uh, consistently. And, you know, that was, you know, enhanced the creditor body knowledge about what was going on in the case. That's my own personal opinion going back to August of 2022. I mean, nobody really held the amount of spaces that Simon did and really, really undertook efforts to educate the creditor, the creditor body. I mean, there were some town halls by the debtor and the committee which tried to do it, but they were not that frequently. And Simon was, you know, was was putting together videos, educating the creditor body. And, you know, there were a lot of daggers thrown at Adam yesterday, but I think that, you know, you, you can't take that away. Yeah, the only the only problem is that he willingly chose to not make us 100% whole, as uh, as Miss Miss. Kathy Lau <laughs> eloquently stated. Yeah. Well, the bank yeah, think- sort of made that decision, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a lot of a lot of talking yesterday by some pro se. So, anything you want to add, Simon? Uh, yeah, first off, thanks for coming up, Lawrence. Really appreciated that, David. Y- yeah, your your spaces early on in this case with like um, all the other people that are up here were instrumental in helping us understand this process, um, and you're still at it. You know, we it was a bit of a, a crazy journey along the way, but I'll, I'll never forget you for that. One thing I do have a real gripe with you, David, is that when we first came into this process, I thought it was going to be like a, a kind of enjoyable process where we were going to restructure <laughs> the company. And you've been at this for years. And you, you didn't tell us that we were going to have two years of shit. You really didn't warn us what we were in for. This is your job. I guess mea culpa. I mean, the thing that I, I didn't know how long it was it was going to take, although I did have in my head that there was an outside limitation of 18 to 20 months because that's the maximum period of exclusivity for a debtor. But yeah, there have been a lot of ups and downs along the way, a lot. And this is definitely one of, you know, there's always something new. I don't think I've been in a case where there's been, you know, so much stuff where you just sit there and shake your head and say, yeah, it's just another day in Celsius. Yeah. And um, just on it, Lawrence, just for the record, for the recording, Bank to the Future spent 1.6 million. And we believe that 500,000 of it qualified for a substantial contribution, didn't know anything about that process until we were forced to spend a bunch at the end to try and close the deal. And none of it goes to me, none of it goes to Bank to the Future, it all goes to lawyers. And so just for the, just for the record. Yeah, there's actually, since we're sort of off the topic, there is one thing that I, I had, I wanted to sort of discuss with you. When you talk about the rug pull, okay, which is, as I understand it, the point at which a customers reach the 100% threshold. You had sort of a calculation of at what point that occurred uh, in terms of price of, of BTC. The way I look at it is is from the latest coin report, which is from October. At that point, the allocation of Celsius portfolio was, you know, still weighted more than 50% towards ETH. So it was like 55-45 on that coin report. So, you know, in some ways, you know, you can, yeah, you sort of have to come up with a blended number for Bitcoin and ETH to hit that 100% a bogey. And, you know, I took notice earlier this week when, when ETH started to skyrocket. So that's just one thing I wanted to say to you about uh, about the rug pull. I mean, it's sort to me, it's sort of like a blended thing of Bitcoin at 50 something and you know he- yeah uh, yeah thanks for bringing that up so uh, i mean just just by background uh, from mount gox as soon as we hit 100 percent hole everyone started litigating to try and get the upside and then it took another almost eight seven six years to get out because all the opportunists thought they could because you know they we managed to get it where they held the bitcoin and so i always knew this was going to be a thing once we won the case to keep the crypto and then, in, obviously, in Bitfinex, we we managed to uh, get it get out before it was a hundred percent whole, and that became the most highest performing recovery in, in in any of the companies. And so I knew I knew that was coming. So as soon as we 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 modelled it out, so the Bank to the Future team put together a model, and we took out all the illiquid assets and the mining co. And then once we made some assumptions around Bitcoin and ETH, just on historical data. Right, and it and it came the ETH has to hit three thousand three hundred, 
and Bitcoin has to hit 5,000, uh, sorry, 54,000. And then if we didn't have plan effective date and we just stayed up there and there were complications and I think all the litigation would start coming coming through and everyone would try and get try and get their piece. So that's why I, I just got really aggressive towards the end that now is the time we can't we can't re-solicit and, and that stuff. Yeah. But yeah, it was a, it was a model in in the actual waterfall models. They they did do we use the same assumptions of Bitcoin growth and ETH growth that they used right. in the models. Right. So you're right, yeah. It, it did require ETH to, and, to move. And the, yeah. the other thing I wanted to ask you since you're on the phone and since uh, since we have the bar group here is how how are the mechanics going to work, if you know, on the distribution of Mining Co. stock? Yeah. So the big, the, big, uh, the big moment was just hand the stock over to a transfer agent, and therefore we can get out a plan. And so a transfer agent will, will have like the database of everyone that's entitled to stock. And then once it's with the transfer agent, anything can happen. So if the SEC takes four months with the form 10s and goes through a long extended comment period and then eventually it goes on nasdaq then then that's okay if it has to pivot to another exchange and take a bit longer uh, then it can pivot to another exchange or they can even transfer it out as um, private equity but as soon as it's listed on an exchange i mean just focus on your crypto focus on your lows focus on your preferences uh, and then just forget about it um, i think it will come pretty soon but then you're all going to need to have a brokerage account um, and uh, you'll, you'll give the transfer agent the details of your brokerage. So we had to do this with Coinbase and stuff when it went public. So it goes to the transfer agent and then you provide details to your broker. And, uh, you know, most of the people in the US, if it's on NASDAQ, you'll have like lots of solutions for that. Non-US, we got some solutions. Uh, and then and then you, it just goes through the archaic process before blockchain to get the, the the registers updated and stuff. But what I'd say is just 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 don't worry about it. Get your crypto back. Get everything else back, and uh, we'll we'll make sure everyone's got the process that they need to follow. And something just to follow up. I mean, is there any way for a creditor to? I'm not asking for legal advice, but in your experience, is there any way for a creditor to monetize that distribution of mining co stock before the SEC approves the registration statement? I don't think so. Well. Yeah, I mean, if anyone wants to do, once it's with a transfer agent, if anyone wants to do an OTC trade, not not really thought about it or thought of practicality, but essentially a claim style market could right. could happen if we all if we all put our heads together and there's people that want to buy discounted stock and there's people that want to sell at a discount. I'm sure, there's a way we could try and figure that out, but I don't think it would be soon. It would take it would take quite some time to figure out how to do that. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. That's, so if, it, that's if it's for like tax and you want to do it really soon, I I can't imagine that being figured out quickly i don't think it would be done by the debtor as well it would just be an independent party trying to figure it out right and i i guess for the we didn't say it but we probably should have at the beginning that the the debtors in the notice that was circulated the two notices the preference notice and the borrower repayment notice they both reference an effective date of uh, anticipated and effective effective date of january 31st at yesterday's hearing, it seemed that they were still focused on January 31st, but it wasn't a certainty that that date was going to be the effective date for distribution. So I just wanted to note that. Yeah, they're, they're working towards January 31st. If something goes wrong, I, I, am, I, I really, there's no, as far as I can see, there's no games from here. They want, they want this stuff out on 31st of January. And if it takes, uh, you know, like five days after the effective date, and th there's also an interesting optimization of because you've got 15 days prior to the effective date, you can just try and make it effective on the exact right price of, of Bitcoin and ETH that optimizes that. So there's an element of if we get like a real crash or pump and trying to optimize that for creditors. Right, right, right. Any other right. questions about? So we got, uh, Bit we got Bitcoin Joe here. Hey, guys. Thanks, for, thanks for letting me speak. Appreciate it. Quick question. David, you might be able to answer this. Simon, you might be able to answer this. So I have a small loan. I borrowed $6,000. I put up 1.1 Bitcoin. I immediately took that $6,000 and I turned it into USDC and I put it on Celsius. And it's sitting there still. So my question is, should I pay back that $6,000 to get more Bitcoin back? And then I'm assuming that 6000 in USDC is part of my 
you know, I had Ave, I had Matic, I had ETH, I had all my ETH actually, and I had Bitcoin on on Celsius as well. That I'm assuming is going to get come back to me in some percentage. The question is, do I pay back that full six thousand in cash? You know, do I opt to do that or I do I do the set off treatment? Have you looked at your uh, notice? Yes, it's it's telling me that I I am owed my collateral minus six thousand dollars. Okay. Yeah. So and you so you do have the ability to check off the box and repay that six thousand dollars in the window. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's obviously a choice you have to make based on you know your own personal financial circumstances. But if you do pay it back, you know you're you would be getting the distribution on the collateral side that's set forth in the notice. And then on the earn side, you'd be getting, they're not distributing a USDC, they're just distributing Bitcoin and ETH. You'd be getting, you know, the the crypto back, uh, Bitcoin and ETH for in lieu of USDC. Right. It feels to me like I should pay the 6K if I have it, which I do. Uh, and that would probably get me more liquid crypto back, which is the goal. Right. Finan- yeah. Financially, it's it's the same thing. Yeah, you think so? Okay. Well, we so that's six thousand that you would be paying back. You can just buy it at spot right now for six thousand. Right, but what I'm saying is, I guess yeah, I guess the six thousand in USDC that becomes part of my earn. I'm just I'm just thinking that I'm going to get like, aren't we getting only a percentage back of that? Yes. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So it seems to me I should pay it back, uh, and then oh god, yeah. If, but you're so, only getting a percentage back of 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 your borrow claim. You're getting a. Hundred percent back of your collateral, but the excess portion is being treated like an earned claim. Right. I'm just curious about these. If I leave this uh, the six thousand USDC that's in the you know earned claim now, part of my Bitcoin and ETH distribution that they're going to give back to me. I'm just thinking that that's gonna that they're going to cut some of that out, and I'm not actually going to get this. That six thousand gets put in there, and then I only get a you know like say it's fifty percent. So, so let's 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 break it up. Let's break it up into parts, right? Because yeah, this, yeah. this is a very common question, Thank and there really is is no way to answer it. Honestly, it's just whatever you prefer to do. Uh, but the and loans, there might be tax reasons, right? Yes, like, yes, yeah. So so the loans are the collateral is gone, right? It, it doesn't exist. All we have is a debt that is owed to us by the by the debtor Celsius, and a debt that we owe Celsius, right? They owe us, we owe them. And unfortunately, the way the bankruptcy code is written, whatever that debt is, is a dollar amount. So the day they went into bankruptcy, the dollar amount of that debt was finalized, right? right. So you owed, would you say 5,000? Yes, 6K. 6K, yeah. okay. So you owed Celsius 6K, and Celsius owed you, uh, what was it? One Bitcoin. All right, let's say one Bitcoin for simplicity's sake, right? Perfect. So let's say 5,000, you, uh, you owe them, mm-hmm. and they owe you one Bitcoin. As of, as of the petition date, that one Bitcoin is, hold on. So as of the petition date, that one Bitcoin is worth roughly 20,000. Right. You owe them five, they owe you 20. So the options are they can subtract the five from your 20, or you can pay back the five. They'll give you that same five, and then subtract the debt from your 20, right? Yeah, it's the same, isn't it? And, and then you get the difference. Did I say that? I'm, I th- I'm trying to... Yeah, no, you got it. You got it. I got it now. It's the same, in other words. So right. I should just so, do nothing and let so the set-off reason, treatment happen. So right. the reason it was structured yeah. this in this manner mm-hmm. is that it is, for tax purposes, you're paying off your debt to Celsius. Because if you don't pay off the debt, if the debt is, quote-unquote, forgiven or discharged or whatever you want to call it, then that 5000 becomes a taxable gain to you. There's nuances to that, and I don't want to get into it because I'm not a CPA and I really can't describe it well enough. But if I pay it off, do I not incur that tax penalty? That's right. I mean, yeah. well, well, I shouldn't say that's right. I mean, the the tax code on crypto is 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 opaque. Okay, yes. it really hasn't gotten very <clears throat> far. But I think what what people are were very concerned about is that. You know, under the original version of, of the plan that was sent in June, that the set-off treatment was going to be the treatment. And if there's a set-off treatment, it basically means you are disposing of some portion of your collateral to pay back the debt, which is a taxable event. So in order to avoid that disposition event, that's why people wanted the ability to repay their loans so that 
they didn't run the risk of having a capital gain uh, or or other taxable event yeah. associated with the set off. So you need to you know look at your your basis in the one Bitcoin in order to make you know an informed decision. If you had if you bought that Bitcoin at sixty five thousand, you know, and it was being set off, your view might be different because you know you would have the I believe. I'm not yeah. a tax lawyer. No, but yeah, um, you'd get that. Of a, yeah. of a capital, a capital loss. Right, right. Which would be nice. Okay, yeah, but I didn't. So that's. But I understand. Thanks, guys. So th you answered my question. That's amazing. There's, there's different yeah. ways of. There's different ways of looking at it. I've talked to multiple CPAs, and they seem to all have a different uh, view on it. I also talked to a tax attorney, and he had a completely different view. Uh, <laughs> the way I have looked at it, the way my CPA has looked at it, technically the debt isn't discharged because you're paying it from your collateral claim. Now, the only problem there is if they issue you a 1099, you would have to fight the 1099 or you have to just eat it. Meaning if I pay it off and they issue me a 1099 on that payoff? No, if you set, no, if you off, set it off. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. So I'll just pay in it my cuz in my eyes, mm -hmm. uh, a discharge debt means I borrowed whatever, $5 from you and yeah. I told you to go screw yourself, I never paid you back. That debt was discharged. You just said, "All right, fine." He's not going to pay me back. It is what it is. But if I owe you five bucks and you take, you know, my phone, whatever, break it off into five dollar increments and yeah. give me the rest, yeah. I paid off my debt. And I do. I do want to refer you guys. Yesterday, before the court hearing started, uh, Celsius put up on the docket frequently asked questions. Uh, it's I don't know a, a twelve page document, and there's on page what is this? Uh, it's the eighth page of the 12th page. It's, there's a question that says, what type of transaction form will be provided to creditors for accounting and tax purposes? And when can I expect to receive such a form? The answer, Celsius will not be providing any forms to creditors for accounting and tax purposes. Lovely. Okay, so, so, I guess, so, so the author, the author of that form, I'd like to introduce him to the bankers yeah. that are working this case, and I'd like to sell him a bridge. Yeah, yeah, for six billion dollars, so I can make everybody whole. So I wanted to. I, I saw that. I think that was buried in the disclosure statement too, somewhere. But I don't know if they're actually going to be able to do that. But they say they're not issuing any forms for accounting or tax purposes. I think you know. PayPal may issue something or Venmo or Coinbase or whoever the distribution agent is, but Celsius has disclaimed any, you know, you know, obligation to issue tax or accounting forms. Yeah, we, we didn't pay their lawyers enough. That's, yeah, 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 yeah. A, few, a few points on this. So in the, if you're from the U.S., in the disclosure statement, uh, they actually put a decent 16-page analysis, which would be it's really thorough. Um, but obviously, a million disclaimers and some of the, the nuances. So try and go back to the disclosure statement section. Copy that. Uh, if you're outside the U.S., I just pinned a tweet. A, a couple of things, firstly. IRS definitely has your data and HMRC, if you're from the UK, definitely has your data. And when you go to PayPal and Coinbase, your data will definitely be shared with tax authorities. Um, so it's not something to shy away from. And they'll probably take some of the larger accounts and then go down the list to try and, you know, so, you know, if you, again, not, not advice, but a lot of people are in a situation where they didn't understand the implications of, um, but in general, if you proactively solve it before you get investigated, that's normally a route that's, uh, that's uh, recommended. But if you live in a jurisdiction like UK, which works off common law around beneficial ownership, all the opinions that I've seen is that when you deposited to Celsius, because Celsius became the owner, you, you actually disposed when you deposited to Celsius. And if there's quite a few optimizations around there once you understand and break down the transactions. And again, not tax advice, you've got, you really got to work through it yourself. But I don't see much benefit to repaying the loan if you're outside the US. I do see a benefit depending on your circumstances if you're in the US. And then obviously that's just based upon UK common law and US. Uh, then you've got your own, your own like individual situations. But I pinned a tweet to the top and uh, yeah, it's uh, the it's an ultra complicated transaction, really complicated. I would just add to that, Simon. You referenced it. There's 16 pages in the disclosure statement or more that talk about the tax implication of the transaction. I think it does say fairly clearly that 
a set off event is a taxable event and spend some time discussing why the initial deposit at Celsius may not be a taxable event and what arguments would exist presumably under US law because I think the discussion is 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 under US law you know what what the analysis could look like so everyone should read that i mean it's the, as one of my partners once said to me the words are in english but they convey no meaning whatsoever i mean it's a lot of stuff in there but but i think in the end it says you know we don't know uh, another thing i'd add as well is uh, zarin who was up earlier and others you know they 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 took at risk and paid a significant amount to make some optimizations and ensure that language was worded in the right way and some people may have been objecting to plans and stuff like that and not quite fully understanding the strategy um, but david adler and his firm did do a bunch of work um, which may be very beneficial and despite other people's efforts to destroy that work and uh, you know everyone is getting a free lunch off that so if people are complaining that the loan ad hoc had to apply for substantial contributions believe me there were some big substantial contributions in there that maybe people don't understand but it significantly improved the tax situation and creditors had to pay that bill so i know it's a touchy subject but you know it's just the nature of bankruptcy you benefit from other people paying and uh, there was a lot of work done well that said thank you guys for for everything and thanks for the answers it's amazing you guys helped me a lot Appreciate it. Any other questions? Uh, I think it's Manaj next. Manaj Shanoi. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tony. I uh, just wanted to thank you for the Twitter spaces. I actually had my uh, question answered, so uh, thank you so much. All right. Aaron Lasher, I believe, and then Paul. Yeah, thank you, Tony, and, and thank you, David, and everyone else who took the time. My question was also answered. It was essentially a comparison between paying it off early or just taking the set off, and I think the answer is taxes. So unless I'm mistaken, you can move on. Thank you. There is a second there is a second layer to it but it's a more risky reason right Go on go on <laughs> So this is this is my particular reason for I haven't decided yet but I'm probably going to refinance I'm a Bitcoin maxi I believe that the price of Bitcoin today is a lot lower than the price of Bitcoin tomorrow next month next year whatever right in the future So in my eyes I can buy Bitcoin the principal amount equivalent at today's prices and then I can pay that off at tomorrow's prices. Does that make any sense? Yeah. 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 However, however, there's a ton of risk. Now you got market risk. You got, you know, unfortunately, people keep buying these ETFs and the price keeps going down. I don't get it. So there's a lot of crazy stuff that happens in Bitcoin. Bitcoin has a tendency to humble everybody. If you take risks, Bitcoin will show you that you should not have taken those risks. It happens a lot, but you got to be very cognizant of that. You know, there's a lot of risk to it. and you got to make sure that you're able to bear that risk and you're you got to make sure that you're not going to get destroyed completely by taking on that risk. Okay, so quick quick question. So let's let's take that hypothetical where you put up uh, it was originally a million dollars, but at the Celsius mark to market price it's, you know, 450 called $500,000. They say they owe you $500,000 of your original collateral. How much of that rolls over into the refinance loan considering what you're going to recover is obviously less than the 500,000? maybe let's say you know half or or maybe a little more i'm not sure what the current the current state of affairs is but how much actual crypto so let, let's use an example let's say um, let's say you put in 20 bitcoin for collateral well, we can um, do actual it, numbers so yeah. so i posted on here i think it's the second or third one the refinance calculator uh, i told everyone we're going to have homework so open up your homework if you open up the refinance calculator i posted up a an example of what is possible right we don't know what's going to happen is just hypotheticals based on a bunch of assumptions that we had to kind of scrape through from the uh, from the docket so i put up a principal a million dollars 100 bitcoin collateral right so if you elect to pay it off or refinance whatever you choose you will pay back or the lender will pay back 1 million dollars and at the bitcoin price that i put up which is 46k that would be the equivalent of 21.7 bitcoin So the first phase is the principal refinance. So that one will net you 21.7 Bitcoin uh, as your new collateral. And then the second phase is what we're calling the excess collateral, which is basically the total collateral claim at the petition value minus your principal. And that will net you 
at a estimate of 75% liquid crypto distributions, 17.7. So if you were to refinance this hypothetical loan, let's say Ledin, right? Because we have Mauricio up here. Let's say you go with Ledin, you will now have a new loan that is a principal of $1 million collateralized by 39. Let's say five Bitcoin, which is a LTV of 55%. Is everyone following it? I'm going to have to do some more homework. I mean, it sounds to me like that's a recovery of half of the 100 Bitcoins. 40%. Right. 40% coin recovery. And based on the claim, Simon, do you have like sort of a, a number of if the case were to distribute today, what the liquid crypto portion would be? Is it around 70% or so? Dollar value, yeah. But the every dollar. earned claim will get about 24, 25% of their crypto. Right, right. Yeah, like, yeah, I think, Tony, when we did my numbers, for example, I mean, people can know my numbers. I had 800 Bitcoin originally. I think we ran the thing and I was getting less than 300 back, right? So, and that's with a full refi with a $9 million loan. So I think that, uh, I, I, I don't know, from my perspective, I still, it's really important to understand exactly where this LTV number is because, you know, I don't want to go into lead in with a high LTV and then get liquidated. And so I'm a little confused how I come out of this if before I had 800 against nine, and I'm getting 40% recovery, and I'm getting less of the excess, it seems like my LTV should be worse. It shouldn't, you know? Well, here, so we can, this is what we do, by the way. Everyone in the group knows Zaren's entire life, basically, yes. when it comes to this. I use him as an example all the time. So. <laughs> well, so, yeah, well, so like Kirkland gonna... published it a long time ago, so there's nothing yeah. much you can do, you right. know? They were going after the U.S. trustee so, when they originally were the ones that were publishing everyone's information. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, Mizinski gonna... published our addresses as well. Was there? And did too. It wasn't a big deal then, but yeah. Anyway, uh, so, so Zarin's specific loan, right? He's got $9 million collateralized by 800 Bitcoin. At today's value, do you want to hear it, Zarin? Do earmuffs. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Let's do, do earmuffs. At today's value, it's worth $36.8 million, right? At the petition value, it's worth like sixteen. So if he were to refinance, he would be walking away with like 300 Bitcoin. Yeah, so that's, some... that's, that's less. Well, I guess it's that, yeah, yeah. Is that right around 40% like Simon was saying? Or, yeah, it's yeah, a little, little less. In, the, in that ballpark, a little less. But, but if, Bitcoin prices, if Bitcoin prices go up, I'll get less. And then if we right. get full recovery, it could even be less, right? So right. Yeah. And that LTV that's showing to you, Tony, what's that? Because I'm very concerned about LTVs. I just don't want anyone getting liquidated. Yeah. So unfortunately, that's kind of the issue. The way we structured it this way, uh, you kind of hedge your bets on both ends. If the price is low, you'll get more coins because you're paying back the principal and getting that equivalent. But if the price is high, you get back less coins, but your LTV becomes better. So at current prices, and this isn't for today, it's based on yesterday's prices, your LTV is like almost 60, but you're getting roughly 35%-ish in kind of your collateral. And because we have Mauricio on here, what was he targeting having people come in below 70? Was that it? So, for example, you know, an average loan like mine will be right kind of around the limit. Hey, guys. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Awesome. Thanks for the questions, Aaron. Just to give some, some clarity here, I think a couple of points on this. One, at Ledin, we're allowing loans to start up until an LTV of 80%. Now, the, our loans normally start at 50% LTV. And normally speaking, our our notifications get sent out when the LTV reaches 70 and when the LTV reaches 75 again, and our platform automatically liquidates loans at 80. Now, for Celsius, because a lot of people are taking haircuts of the collateral and oftentimes they're starting above 50, what I am seeing is that most of the people who's, who's have walked through their calculators and looked at their potential LTVs at opening, they are sitting in the range of low 60s and, and even mid 50s in some cases. I did have one borrower that somehow walked out with, or started with a 30% LTV, but that's very, very rare. Uh, and then on the higher end of that threshold, I've seen maybe two or three people that would be over 80%. So most of the people that I have uh, spoken with and, and you know done walkthroughs on their LTVs, they are mo they are within the sort of low 60s to mid 70s in terms of the range. And what we have done, because we understand that it wouldn't be a great experience if we opened the loan at 60 and then you start getting emails at 70, we did all the work to essentially push uh, Celsius liquidations to 90% LTV. So for the Celsius clients, the notifications will start at 80 and 85 and the loan will get liquidated at 90. So the other thing that we have at Ledin that I like to tell people about, especially those worried about opening at higher LTVs, is the auto top-up feature. 
So if you have extra Bitcoin that you want to have to manage your loan and prevent a sort of an overnight move and, and having to top up your loan while you're asleep or traveling, we have this feature in Ledger called Auto Top Up, where you can put assets in the transaction account, which sits in cold storage, primarily cold storage, and you can pre-authorize Ledger to move those assets to, to top up the loan, basically, if and when it needs it. So it, it can be there sort of trigger ready to protect your loan. Just, you know, three points in there. Obviously, we can't change the liquidation, well, the fact that we well, have to, but... Well, we one, one question, Mauricio, just to help people understand. Someone that's at a high LTV has two options. They could either pay their loan down with you or they could put in excess collateral, right? So does right. Is, is it true that paying the loan down will lower their LTV better? Like, if you have, let's say, a million dollars today or whatever, relative amount, does it make more sense to pay down your LTV, your, your loan or to add collateral? I think if you pay the loan down, you get the LTV lower faster, don't you? So, yeah, and that really, the answer is it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So if what you're trying to accomplish is to lower your LTV with the minimum outlay of funds, the repayment of principal will achieve that more effectively because the loans have to be collateralized two to one. So for every $1 that you repay in the principal, you'll be sort of releasing two on the collateral side. And then vice okay. versa. Uh, yeah, to your point. It's yeah, that, that's what I want everyone on this call to understand. It's very important for everyone to understand. If you really want to sleep well at night, the best thing you can do is pay down your loan. That'll get your LTV down faster. Correct. And and we can work with clients that want to refinance loans and basically make a partial repayment or an additional top up to, to basically make their LTVs healthier before they open. That is definitely an option. We know there's a few people that want to do that, in particular with their earned claims. Lots of people have reached out to us to bring over their earned claims as additional collateral, which we will obviously happily accept to protect your loan. Uh, but there's more than one way to do so. But yeah, Zarin, that, that is a, a really good point on what's most yeah. efficient. Well, I just I know because Mauricio and I have been talking about this in private. I just want everyone to know. I want everyone to kind of understand publicly best practices. I mean, we're not in the ideal situation. And kind of as, as one of the ad hoc members with, you know, I, I talk to David and Mauricio regularly. What I'm doing for myself is I'm going to pay my loan down a little bit. So th that's what I'm going to do. And I just recommend other people do that too. I just wanted to get that out there and let everybody know and give you a little bit of time. I know there's not much time and that's where it's really frustrating is Kirkland just dumped this on us and said, okay, we've got 17 days or whatever. But if you can start moving things around to get that loan paid down a little bit, that's best practices as far as I'm concerned. And you guys should try to do that. And I, I had a question for Mauricio, sort of going back to uh, the refinancing process. When we had spoken, uh, you or earlier this week or late last week, you indicated that you know you were dealing with the operational people over at Celsius, and the the goal was the sharing of 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 information on customer uh, for KYC purposes. And I'm assuming that you took a look at the notice that was posted. And my question to you, and I haven't had a chance yet to reach out to you, is if you elect to refinance your loan, that I, I, I did not see a consent in there to share uh, information with potential third-party lenders. Is there going to be another form, to your knowledge? How is the process going to work in terms of you know, information sharing. Do you have a better sense of that right now? Yeah, thanks, David. That's a great question. And obviously something really important that we've been going back and forth with the with the Celsius team. So this is uh, our understanding. We just did a session on this and whoever wants to take a look it's on our Twitter account or in our letter YouTube channel, you can see it on either one. But we just did a session on what you can expect for next steps based on our understanding. So we understand that most people on this call have received already an email with the ballot where they should be or elected the refinancing election, if, if that is what they want to do. Then my understanding is shortly after this vote has been cast. So uh, at some point between the 17th and the 31st, you will be receiving an additional communication where you will be giving consent to share your information with a third party lender. Now. What isn't clear yet is if you're going to be able to specify which lender you want that information shared with. I would hope and presume that they let you say that. But my understanding is that there will be a second notice that will ask for your consent to share that additional information. And we need that information because the, the source of truth for the assets that we'll be getting to reopen the loan is the debtor. So we actually need that information to come directly from them to know exactly what assets we're getting so we can give you an exact LTV. And so that is that is something that is coming, David, as far as confirming consent to have that information shared. OK, that's very helpful. I mean, because when I saw the notice, I was, you know, wondering when that process was going to start. And I'm 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 happy to hear that it's going to happen, you know, 
prior to the effective date. The other question, I, I just want to put this out there. I mean, this is sort of uh, an example for a situation that you might be encountering if people uh, reach out to you is, I'm going to use a hypothetical borrower who had 50 Bitcoin on the platform, essentially a million dollars, and had a $740,000 loan outstanding against that. Now, when you cut through and do the the distributions, that person's going to be at a pretty high LTV. Can you talk a little bit about what what you guys can do in terms of, you know, structuring how that person, you know, will make a payment to you in connection with the refi so that the the new loan, the loan that you issue is essentially conforming to your uh, standards? That is a really great question, David. And the way that we are working this, uh, and this will be more clear for those who saw the, the session we just did an hour ago, because we literally walked through the UI on what that would look like on the Letting platform when you're when you're going through the refi process. So just to paint the picture, when you enter into Letting, once you have your account and we have received your information from Celsius, we're going to contact you. So you log into Letting and finalize the legal agreement for those loans, whoever you want, whichever you want to refinance. So the way this works is you log on to Ledin, you're going to input one of your Celsius loan IDs, and the platform is going to spit out every loan that you have, whether it's eligible for refinancing or not. So the loans that are going to pop up, even if they are over 80%, you're going to see the loan populated on the screen, and there's going to be a notice that says that the loan is over 80%. So because we have received everybody's input forms from their in expressing their interest to refinance with us. And because we're going to have the LTV for that loan from Celsius, our plan is if we see anybody that has loans that are over 80 hitting that threshold is we're going to proactively reach out to these clients to make arrangements and understand whether they want to make a partial repayment on the debt or send excess collateral, which would be the two ways where that can happen. And that partial repayment, I estimate that it can be done like any other loan at Ledin, which is we'll take dollars crypto uh, for you to issue those payments. So proactively, we will we'll be reaching out to you if there is any sort of uh, thresholds that your loan doesn't meet to make the change, to make the necessary adjustments so that it can come into the into the bucket, if you would, David. That's excellent. Thank you, Mauricio. I mean, the reason why I asked the question is because there's another important point to note about the notice that was put on the docket. It essentially says that if you elect the refinancing option and you don't refinance, then you're going to be subjected to the set-off treatment. Now, I saw that and I didn't think that was accurate or, or that was pretty fair because like, let's suppose that you're in a jurisdiction that for whatever reason doesn't permit, uh, you know, crypto lending or, or, or you're, let's say you're in, I'll uh, pick a state, Wyoming and Wyoming's actually bad, but Massachusetts, you're in Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren enacts a law that there's no more crypto lending in the state. And you're basically prevented from getting crypto refinancing and under the, under what the debtors put out, in that situation, you're going to be subjected to the set off, even if you can repay the loan. So I, I I think this point needs to be further discussed with Kirkland, because it seems to me that, you know, if something happens, you know, in the future, such that you're, you're ineligible because of legal reasons to obtain refinancing, that it should not be that you automatically default back to the, to the set off treatment. But that's one of the issues that I spotted in the notice, which I think is important to, you know, to tell the the borrowers out there that that's the way they, they wrote it. I don't understand the logic of it. You know, if you've elected refinance, why you can't repay the loan if something falls through, but that's what that's what it says. That's an important clarification, David. And, you know, we will be doing everything we can to let anyone that wants to make a partial repayment and bring their loans into the thresholds do so. Right. Uh, and, you know, there's only so much we can do about regulation. Uh, right. But, you know. And, and uh, so I asked the question to start it off with, you know, the borrower, the hypothetical borrower who has an LTV that's above 80 percent to make sure that you can structure it in a way that you can pay off the loan and that borrower can make some type of partial payment to you and 
obtain the refinance rather than being subjected to to the set off. One hundred percent. Yeah. To, to Zarin's point, even some people that don't that aren't over the eighty percent to want to proactively do this yes. to make it even healthier. So we we put a tremendous amount of thought into this workflow and allowing room to make these adjustments. So something that we're going to be, I'm sure we're going to be reaching out to a lot of you. And if any of you wants to proactively make a partial repayment as Ala Naren, as he explained, please send us an email. We're happy to coordinate that for you. And then what, one thing, David, I would just mention is on that repayment, on that form that we were sent from, from, from the debtor, uh, it, it has that first option where you want to, you want to, you want to maintain your loan, you want to repay it. We were talking about having the option for somehow let in or, you know, them to reach out a second time to people that check that first box to give them a second chance to refi if they want to, especially if they mischeck the box, because I, I think people will mischeck that box. It's un, it's unclear. And those people, because they checked that first box, should still have the opportunity to refi. So I think we were going to talk to Kirkland and the debtor about the option for a second level communication going out to people to give them that chance. Right. And presumably, right, as part of the sharing of information protocol, we'll know that those emails have gone out and we can tell people if you should have received an email about information sharing. If you didn't receive it, reach out immediately, you know, to uh, to the debtors. But, you know, they have this this election deadline of January 17th, which, you know, creates uh, an issue. I would again, encourage everyone to uh, look very carefully at the confirm that they get after they submit the, you know, the form to Stretto. I can't emphasize that enough. Hey, Mauricio, sorry, I'm, I'm going to ask the difficult question just so everyone's got it. What do you do with the collateral? And is there anything that stops you buying 122,000 A6 in the Cedarville mining plant? So hey, Simon, Simon didn't do his homework, I see, <laughs> before he came on here. So Simon, we have, uh, we spoke a while back and I think we asked, uh, you asked a similar question and I'm happy to say that as part of this process, we have accelerated the launch of our custody loans. So by letting you have the option, you can choose to have your collateral remain in cold storage. It's not rehypothecated or lent into the market. That comes with a higher interest rate of 15.9. And then you also have the option to do a standard loan which does allow Ledin to re-lend the Bitcoin into the market. The benefit of that is you get a lower interest rate at 11.9, uh, but there's a trade-off. And uh, we have both options, so you can choose. But can you can you borrow against our collateral and buy a mining operation? What we really want is we're looking for someone that um, borrow, borrows long and has to pay out short. That's what that's what's important to us. No, so, uh, Mauricio, sorry, sorry. If, you guys, if you guys want to get into mining, I know a, a, a rundown half-built facility in Texas that doesn't have much power. You know, funny enough, so I started mining Bitcoin in Venezuela many, many years back, and I helped a lot of people set up their mines. And in fact, a lot of the reason Lenin came to be was because we didn't want to sell the Bitcoin that we produced in our operation to grow our mines. Uh, but after seeing a few cycles uh, and seeing the potential risks of lending against ASICs, that was the call we made very early on. So at Lenin, we only lend against digital assets. We never took you know, any ASICs or such as collateral. That is not the business that we are in and not something we expect to get into anytime soon. And do you have free swaps and dark mode? Uh, sorry, free what? Do you have free swaps and dark mode? Uh, no, we do not. We, do not. Uh, we got Thomas. Yeah, hi guys. Um, hopefully you can hear me. Yes? Okay, yes. good. In terms of refinancing, I, I want to, this may have been discussed earlier because I was late to, to this conversation, but the question is is about if, if you've taken a loan out within the 90-day period prior to the bankruptcy and you've got a clawback provision, in essence, is 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 there an opportunity to refinance on the principal of the loan? So in my case, it would be $150,000. And then any clawback amount that's required under the the bankruptcy settlement for for the the clawback percentage, if you will, on the uh, on the uh, the amount of the loan. That's David's qu uh, question for David. He answered she it before. It. Basically, yeah. So basically, uh, you're going to have some time to settle the clawback right. post effective date. Right. And I wanted to just point since you joined late. If you take it, a look at page six of what was filed at 4206 on the docket, which I believe this is a, the notice. Um, there's a provision that says, if please take further notice that account holders with preference liability above 100,000 who make the refinancing election must resolve their preference liability by making a settlement payment 
or otherwise resolving their preference liability with the litigation administrator before the refinancing process can be completed. The next sentence, because the refinancing process will begin after the effective date, account holders with preference liability greater than $100,000 can make their settlement payments after the effective date. So in the notice, and it's also in the election form, I think it's on page two of the election form, it says that you know, if you're a borrower and you have preference exposure, you know, you don't have to make the uh, preference settlement payment prior to the effective, you know, the time period has been extended and the cutoff is, you know, prior to the uh, refinancing of the loan. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it does. It does make sense. So look at page two also of, of the actual election form. It's the it's the second full paragraph okay. of that. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. And then let me ask one last question, if I can, that uh, probably is obvious to many, but I haven't heard it addressed. And it's just, does, does NUCO effectively give, if, if the pricing of, of Bitcoin Ether continues to rise, um, is the ultimate, ultimate winner here NUCO? Tony? There is no uh, NUCO, it's mining. Well, mining, fine. Yeah. Yeah, the official name for Mining Co. is, uh, yes, uh, ticker symbol SHT. I don't think so. I think the creditors will just basically... Come on, Teddy, you're going to be a, you're gonna be a maxi soon, the Mining Co. maxi. you got, you, you, you got to push your own interest. My portfolio is currently bigger right now than my Celsius claim in mining stocks. I am, I am overly <laughs> exposed to Bitcoin mining. Good companies, not whatever we got going on. But uh, yeah, no, it would just go to us. We would get a higher distribution. The good thing that we've learned is that it doesn't matter what the plan says. They could just change it. So they can just fudge the numbers. If we're over 100% distribution, they could just fudge it to go to, you know, 95. Fair enough. So I don't think that's 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 likely gotcha. at this point. All right. Shitco is going to get $175 million or whatever the amount was, 225. Uh -huh. And that's pretty much Very good. it. All right, thank you, guys. Hello. Can you hear me? Hey, Paul. Thank you. Sorry, I don't want to date crash, but I was in line and you said I was coming up soon. I just want to make sure that I'm still in line. It's all you. Oh, okay. Sorry, I've been awake for two days, stressing over this whole thing, so I might be gibbering. And I, I'm not actually AFA with the whole thing. I don't know how it works anyway. And this is a tad odd topic. On my uh, email, the one that we're all talking about, it said that I've been identified as one of those people that withdrew within 90 days, which is correct. Um, and now they're saying for me to get access to my 8,000 that's left. I've got to pay 120,000. So I'm not in the position to do that because I've the money I withdrew, I've already paid tax on it. I've paid the loans back and put a deposit on the house, which was the whole reason of being crypto in the first place. Paul, does that mean any... the loan repayment or clawbacks? Yeah, the clawbacks, sorry, yeah. Um, I can't get any guidance from anyone, even local solicitor in Australia here. He's got no idea, so I've got no one else to turn to. I um, think. So can uh, someone just give me an outline of what what I'm up for, please? And and what if I'm not in a position to pay the the money? What happens to me? I I think if I were. Well, you got to be careful here, David, because you actually are going to be making these decisions. Yeah. All right. I'll. I All mean, right, I, so... I I was just going to say that you know you know if you can't repay it, well, I don't know what you have in your urn, what what else you have. You know, but if if the set off is going to result in another taxable event to you, it seems to me that you probably would elect the refinancing option in the sense that, you know, it gives you time to figure out what you can do post effective date. Does that make sense? Well, if I could buy some time, yes, that would I'd have some option then to be in a position to, you know, to repay. But you have you have a very small amount in your earned claim, you know, compared to what you withdrew. Yes, yes. I, was, I had 8,000 USD I left in there and I withdrew all my coins because at the time the, the as was collapsing, so I thought I'd take the money what I've got. I had no idea that it was going to collapse, that Celsius was going to go under and so forth. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, but it, in the 90-day window, I've been, yeah, I, I, I didn't realise until this, this email. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I can't really tell you what to, what you should do. All I can tell you is what I probably would do in that situation. Yeah, and, if, and if I had, you know, several thousand you know, versus, you know, 120,000, like you said, withdrawn, and they're going to want you to pay 27.5% of that, I would tell them to uh, kindly go at themselves. Sorry, the debt is 120,000. Not the 27% tw of the thing equals 120,000. So, oh, okay, yeah. So I would tell them not so kindly to go at themselves in that particular case. They're going to send you a memo, they're going to send you like a notice 
they're going to try to settle it, litigate it, and then you're going to have to go through the uh, legal process, unfortunately. But it doesn't make sense to pay 120 k just so you can have access to, you know, several thousand. No, that's right. That's right. But you my concern probably, was... You're probably going to have to uh, hire an attorney because they will most likely going to come after you for it. Yeah. For, for a clawback. Yeah. Yeah. And, and is there a website anywhere I can go to look for an attorney? Because there's no one here in Australia seems to be okay with any of this crypto, especially this case. Mine didn't know what I was talking about. So Yeah, I have, uh, I have no idea, to be honest. You're going to have to. Uh, there's a clawback group. I don't know how you can reach out to them, but I know there is a clawback group. I don't know if they're taking mm -hmm. on new members, but uh, yeah, I'm not really sure. Yeah, there's really not much to do. You have to just kind of wait. Honestly. Oh, okay. Because, yeah, well, I've been stressed because this date's coming up. And like I said, I've, my whole life's on the line and I just I don't know what to do. So, yeah. So if I well, just wait and the time plays out, then they'll issue gonna, me a notice. They're going to send something. you a notice, a letter, something that they want you to pay them back. Uh, you're going to have to go through the uh, dispute uh, resolution uh, process. I have no idea how that works. Yeah. Uh, Deb Kofsky. Hold on. Someone just sent me this. Is that YOLO? <coughs> Excuse me. It is well. All right, so you want to write this down? Yeah, okay. Deb Kofsky. I don't know how to spell it, but it's the law firm is Troutman Pepper. T R O U T M A N. Pepper. Sorry, can you put this? T R O U T, as in Tom, M A N. And the second word is Pepper. P as in Paul, E P P E R. That's the yeah. law firm uh, that is handling the, uh, the clawbacks for Celsius customers. Okay, so, so, then, so I would reach out to them. And they're in the US, are they? Or? Yes, yeah. The this the attorney is Deb Kofsky. I have no idea how to spell it. I just have heard her name so many times. If you if you go in, search in um, YouTube, Aaron Bennett Clawbacks. He did a video on it. Aaron, are you familiar with Aaron Bennett? Uh, no, I've watched most of your videos, Simon. So uh, okay, go search him in YouTube, Aaron Bennett, uh, B E N N E T T, and Clawbacks. Yeah. And he did a video where he went through the legal case and everything um, okay. of that law firm that Tony just gave you. And uh, I'm sorry he did it to you, but if it's any consolation, you did better than us idiots that left the money in. Yeah, well, it's, well, it's probably put me in a worse position because before I would have just lost the money that was in there. And then now, you know, I've committed and I'm going to lose everything that's taken me 25 years to even get in the position that I thought I was in. And... Well, you're not going to lose everything because if you use that money to buy a house, they can't take that from you. I mean, I don't know the law in Australia, granted, but in, in the U.S. it's very difficult. I imagine Australia is probably worse uh, for them. Yeah, I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna post the link here in the comments for one of Aaron's videos, and you can just search through the rest of his videos to find uh, something. I know he's had a bunch of them. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for, for everything. I'm certainly more more in favour of what's going on now than what because all that those paperwork is just legal jargon. I can't make heads or tails of it. But, uh, yeah, the more know. words, I think they get paid more. So that's why the attorneys do that. <laughs> yeah. Over four thousand that documents, Paul. Yeah, sorry, just um, before we go, where did where you post that link? Where can I actually find that? Um, I can't see it here anyway. On the bottom right, there's like a small little purple quote thing. It says 27. Oh, yes, I see that. So click on there. I just tagged you. You can look at that. one of the oh, yeah. videos and you can search through his YouTube. He has like that info on there. Thanks very much. Sorry to you, Tom. All right, we have West Chang, Killer Porsche. Yes, hello. Thanks for the opportunity for me to speak. So... Just going back to the option of the advanced prepayment uh, versus set off. Uh, I borrowed a USDC against my collateral and it said somewhere and I couldn't figure out where it was. I thought it was a Twitter space where that we had to pay back, pay back in cash. Uh, but we, if I borrowed USDC, is there an option to, to pay back in USDC or, or does this have to be wired in cash? I believe it's cash. And it was to be sent to some bank, third party bank. Is that right? I believe that it's if you look at the notice, the bank is listed and it's a flag star bank, I okay. believe. And uh, Dave, would you say that's relatively safe? With flag star? To send the fund over and trust that they will do the right thing and pay back the collateral. Well, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I guess I can never say anything with certainty, but... You know, there's FDIC insured. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there are under the payment instructions. Uh, you know, Flagstar Bank is listed. There's you know a routing number and the account number and the account name is a Celsius Retail Advance Obligation Repayment Account. So it looks like you know a special account has been established for borrowers who wish to repay their loans 
you know, in that five day window. And when the collateral is paid back, obviously the, the, the quantity that I would get back, whether it's ETH or BTC, would be depending on the price at the time that we make the payment. Is that right? Yeah, and there's something in the notice that, that discusses it. It says if when you repay it, uh, when you repay your loan, you'll be getting back crypto in the amount of the repayment, and the prices are set based on I think the price of the crypto as of noon that day through I forgot uh, Paprika. What's the name uh, of it, Tony? Point Paprika. Yeah. Yeah. So so you know it's just sort of taking your your repayment back and converting it back into BTC or ETH based on the prevailing prices. Yeah. And not to get too technical. So 1201 in the morning, if I was to make that payment, uh, that would default back to the noon pricing at that uh, on that day? Yes. I think that if I understand you, if you repay it back, you know, on that day, the, the notice says that they'll They'll return to you crypto uh, using the exchange rate at Coin Paprika as of you know a certain time. So there might be a little bit of a differential. Okay, uh, and uh, that is due by I think the twenty seventh of January. Just want to make sure. I think right? it's yeah, yeah. I mean, it's January. It ends at midnight Eastern time on January twenty sixth. And if you actually go to page, I guess it's the first page of the election form. It's actually in the first paragraph that says retail advance obligation repayment election. It says that you have to the repayment period begins on January 21st and ends at midnight on January 26th. The amount of BTC or ETH that the retail borrower will receive will be determined as of noon prevailing Eastern time on the date of repayment based on prices reported by coinpaprika.com. Mm -hmm. And it also notes that there may be a delay in in getting you back that, uh, that crypto because it's going to go through PayPal or Coinbase for distribution purposes, as sure. I understand it. At least the price will be locked in on the date that you make, right. whether that's 21st or 20th. Right. And as far as um, the loan, if we were to get a loan, then we would work with a lender to ensure that uh, it gets paid, the, the collateral gets paid or it gets offset uh, between 21st and 26th, correct? Well, I think if you're getting a third party refinancing, you have to check off that box that says you wish to refinance. And the refinance process is going to happen after the effective date. So you would talk to the third party lenders and, you know, try yep. and uh, structure your loan that way. Yep, yep. But, I, I mean, you, you sort of highlight the point that Zarin made earlier about the confusion right. uh, regarding repayment versus refinance. If you mm -hmm. check off the repayment box, you have a five day window from January 21st to January 26th to repay the loan. Mm -hmm. If you check off the refinancing option, then you have after the effective, the anticipated effective date of January 31st, mm -hmm. you know, to, to get your loan from a third party lender. I see, okay. Okay. And uh, one more question in regard to the uh, preference exposure. So uh, is the 27.5% subject to the whole amount or uh, or is it just anything above 100K? Does everybody know? The whole 20? amount. It's the whole amount. So what yeah. your exposure is, you would, uh, if you pay it back now, you would be, uh, you, would, you would owe them 27.5% of that total exposure. So if you have say one hundred thousand one dollars, you're basically screwed. You have to pay the whole twenty seven and a half percent while those people with ninety nine thousand nine hundred dollars get don't yeah. have anything. Is that right? It's uh, it's technically right, probably not, because they would still have to come after you for it, but it will certainly delay your loan. So the hundred hundred K is kinda of like an arbitrary number where it's not worth it to come after smaller amounts. Right? Like let's say I mm -hmm. let's say I would do like eleven thousand dollars. Are you going to spend forty grand in legal fees right. to hopefully win a, a judgment against me for eleven k? Uh, I got you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you're at like one hundred and two thousand, right? They have to decide: is it worth spending that money coming after you? And then even if they come after you, even if they win, there's still no guarantees you're going to pay them. Right. You know, how how long is it going to take? What if you don't have any cash? What if you don't have any assets? What if you have an unfortunate voting accident? There's a lot of things. You know? Yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, and, and the last question, uh, I think we, there was a discussion about the, uh, the Celsius not providing any forms for the accounting and tax purposes. Uh, and I understand the subtle advice that, that you guys spoke of on this call. The, the question I have is these, when, when I hate to, to talk about IRS, but basically when we file taxes 
and you know they're going to have all the records not only from celsius but also from paypal or, or another third party they wouldn't be really be able to, to see that whether that was paid off or not right i mean they, they they don't have the records to say that unless we provide that information so in essence it's we're only subject to the scrutiny if we were to provide the information uh, financial institutions have to provide that data to tax authorities. So they claim they're not going to issue forms, but I don't think the person that wrote that notice spoke to the bankers. Mm -hmm. Once the bankers, you know, get involved, they're going to say, there's no way we're not going to issue 1099s. Yep. That's my personal opinion. I tend I'm to wrong, agree with you. But they're not yep. going to. They're not going to start doing what's in our best interest out of nowhere, you know? <laughs> yep. Okay. Yep. And, and plus, I think uh, it's just too good to, to, to cover all ends. Don't want to be shafted another second time by trying to skip something. So, okay. Very good. Thanks for, thanks for answering all the questions. All right. We got Cho and then Paul. Uh, hi, Tony. And hi, everyone. Thanks for holding this Twitter space. J just want to say thanks again, Simon. Uh, you were very helpful during the time of the Cisco collapse. And I know a lot of people are dogging on you, but you really helped me during that time. Okay, so anyway, with regards to the three choices, right, my basic understanding is we have the set off treatment where we get a percentage of liquid crypto, you know, shit co mining stocks and litigation proceedings. For the repayment option, you would do this to basically save on taxes. And for the refinance option, you would get essentially more liquid crypto with this option. So right now, I'm having difficulty weighing the pros and cons of the set off versus refinance. So I'm wondering if you're able to provide kind of like discrete numbers of the percentage of liquid crypto we would get back in the set off versus the refinance and kind of like your opinion on what category of people should do which choice. Uh, so if you, uh, if you go back once this is over, it's going to be recorded. So you can just go back and re-listen to it. I think it's like an hour in. We went in depth into it, but I'll just do like a quick uh, analysis. Basically, the biggest reason why you would refinance or pay off is just taxes. If your loan gets set off, they're basically selling your collateral at you know twenty thousand per Bitcoin to pay the debt that you owe them. They might issue a ten ninety nine to you for that as a discharge debt, even though I disagree with that. And if you if you bought Bitcoin at let's say under twenty thousand, you would have a capital gain. If you bought it over, then you would have a capital loss. So it might benefit you. It might not. It depends on your own personal situation. Uh, I can't tell you what's best for you because I have no idea what your tax situation looks like, right? So you'd have to talk to your CPA and then just kind of go from there. Uh, financially, technically, it's the exact same from a financial standpoint, right? Because uh, the loans are broken up into two, two, two parts, right? Let's say part A is the principal amount and part B is the excess collateral. So part A is basically the debt that you owe them, you're paying them that debt. And in return, they're giving you the exact amount but in Bitcoin or ETH. So that's a one for one, it's a wash essentially, but it meets your uh, obligation to them. You pay off your debt, so there's no taxable event. And then part B, second part of that is the excess collateral, which is basically the amount of collateral that is left minus your principal. And that's gonna be a percentage based on whatever the liquid crypto distributions will be. Right, so just to go back a little bit with the liquid crypto percentage, I think you mentioned with a refinance option, you get maybe about 30% back in liquid crypto. Is that correct? In kind, it's like 35, 40 at right. today's price. So what percentage of liquid crypto would we get back with the set off option? All right here, let me do some quick math. Set off option, roughly like 10%-ish. Oh okay. So of coin, so yeah, yeah. of coin. Of coins, yeah. I'm talking about in kind in kind however there's a big however it's a giant caveat you get a higher percentage on the refinance or the repayment however you're either spending that money that you're repaying the principal with or you're taking on new debt with a new that you will eventually have to pay back in the future right that's that's good information to kind of consider um, and also with the set off treatment yeah. we we get the the shiko and then we get the litigation proceedings and we would not get that with refinancing no you, so get, you get that with refinancing yeah. you get you get the the mining co and you get the litigation trust interest under whether you refinance or whether you set off or whether you repay yeah we are shitco maxis to the end of okay so with the collateral that's treated as an earned claim i would still get the shit co stocks and the litigation proceedings of that collateral in addition to my refinancing collateral with you know let's say linden or something like that yes. okay that answers my question thank you very much yeah so you will get that set off or refinance or repayment no matter what great thank you 
Hey, Tone, as we've got Sean from someone from Figure, I'm not sure if that's Mike or someone else, um, is it worth like them going through their deadlines and stuff? Yeah, I brought them up if anyone had questions, but I guess they don't have uh, too many lender-specific questions. If they, if they want to go ahead and just kind of discuss their products, their loans, Mauricio went up. I know he's going to leave in a little bit. I don't have a... You there, Sean? Hey, how's it going? Hey, Sean. Do you want to you want to give everyone a like a brief overview of um, if they want to engage in your process and figure can do the same? Mauricio, you you did it, but you you might as well do it as well. Like just a quick pitch. Yeah, I'd love to. Thank you for that, and thank you for having us here and for putting the space together. Uh, Saw Lending has been around since two thousand and sixteen. We're pretty much a Bitcoin maxi company with the primary goal of helping people save wealth in this form. And we've kind of seen policies come and go at BlockFi and others. And we, uh, we've kind of learned along the way of everything you shouldn't do. And what we've continued to stick to as the principles is our core offering is uh, lending. And we have a variety of different flexible terms that we can offer. Um, if you Hello. can name it, we can probably figure out pretty quickly if we can Hello. honor that. Somebody's stepping on the audio. But... Sorry, that person that said, Hello, if you come down and come back up because somebody else is speaking, but you can't hear them. We'll bring you back up. Yeah, thank you. And so we, we're predominantly U.S. focused, uh, expanding jurisdictionally globally where we can. Uh, you can find all the details at saltlending.com. Many of you here we've been interacting with for a very long time, so a lot of familiar faces. Uh, we're pretty excited to finally be coming to the end of this saga. Felt like we've added a lot of value. We want to continue to add value. That's the main mandate uh, for, for creditors here that have pain points. And uh, the main thing we need from you, if you're interested in getting a quote, we're not going to hold anybody accountable to anything, no obligation, unless it's the best offer that you can get is just to have a SALT account and express a loan application and we'll work from there to make sure that we fit the facts and circumstances to the best of our ability for what's ultimately in your best interest. That's kind of a high level. Really looking forward to answering any questions if they're there and hearing what the others have to say. Uh, figure, is that someone else or is Mike behind there? Who have we got from Figure? Hi, yeah, this is uh, Jacob Zawada from Figure. I'm on the operations side. Essentially, uh, we encourage everyone to navigate to figure.com forward slash Celsius refinancing to look at any information regarding the uh, offerings for uh, the refinancing option for your Celsius loans. Um, we believe that we have competitive rates and are very established in the loan business uh, across all U.S. states in the country. And I believe that you can reach out to our team at marketplace underscore support at figure.com if you have any questions and we're happy to answer any questions you have on a case by case basis. You will be asked to set up an account and complete KYC. And we encourage people to do that as a first step uh, if they're interested in refinancing with Figure. Mauricio, do you want to give a quick pitch? Yeah, sure. So Mauricio here from Ledin. Ledin has been in business since 2018. We are we did Canada's first Bitcoin back loan. We were the first Bitcoin back lender to bring in proof of reserves, which is something we still do today. Every six months, an accountant comes to Ledin, looks at our books, produces a report that our clients can verify. Each one of our clients can get it. Many here on the call are familiar with it and have used it. We also have our open book report, which we publish every month, and it breaks down how we use the assets and how we lend those assets and who we lend those assets to to generate the product or generate the yield that we pay and facilitate the loans that we offer. We have a huge emphasis on transparency and risk management. Didn't have any issues in 2022 in terms of all of our clients were able to get their withdrawals and, and we process them in record time, in fact. So uh, something that you know we wear as a badge of honor or the badge of pride and anyone can learn. All of our terms are listed in our website where you can uh, complete the intake form. And Ted, you got a comparison chart up above somewhere, right? Yeah, it's posted on the nest. I'm assuming everyone did their homework like they were supposed to, but in case you didn't, it's up there. All right, who do we got? We got Paul, I believe. Yeah, thanks, guys. I just want to make sure I'm looking at this spreadsheet that you posted correctly. I've got two loans, one in BTC, one in ETH, 93K on the BTC, 75K on the ETH. So you plug in your current prices, obviously the petition date prices are already in there, plug in current prices and then the amount of principal paid, I'm assuming that's how much you want to pay off of your original principal, correct? So that's how much you want to pay or refinance. Right. Okay. So just for shits and giggles, I put in like, let's say the BTC today was 20000 just slightly above the petition date price. This is telling me I'm going to get over 90 94 percent back of my collateral so so here's so here's the issue with that right so if you look at the the orange cell so as the price goes down the percentage paid out on the excess collateral meaning the amount minus the principal is down as well gotcha 
So that amount, you know, I have it at roughly 75% ish for today's prices. Although I went down a lot today, I haven't really checked. So it's probably lower now, but if it went to 20 K per Bitcoin, I don't know what that percentage would be, but I would imagine it's probably in like the 30% range. Mm. So right, you would so... get, so it's kind of like a hedge that we've baked into this uh, structure, right? So if the price goes down, you would actually benefit as a borrower because when you pay off the principal, you'll get back more coins for the same amount of dollars. However, you'll get a smaller percentage of the excess collateral, right. but net you would get back more coins. But again, on the flip side, because the excess will be lower, your LTV will be higher. Yeah, I see, I see that. I, I mean, I, pu I punched in like 25% for distribution percent of excess just to see what numbers will look like. Yeah, um, so, so your LTV, LTV will go up. Yeah, but the amount of coins it. went down, but uh, not as much as I anticipated. Because if I right. put in the real price, you know, let's say 40, uh, 44 today, um, and thanks. So let's say you're refinancing with one of the lenders. When you refinance the principal, right? Because it's broken up into two steps. Step mm -hmm. one is refinancing the principal. So that's one for one. So your LTV starts at 100%, meaning you borrowed whatever, $100 and you have $100 worth of crypto backing it. So your LTV at the start is literally 100%. And mm -hmm. then depending on what the excess collateral amount uh, comes out to, how much percentage of that you get, that's what lowers your LTV. And the higher that percentage goes, the, lo the lower your LTV goes. And yeah, the lower that yeah. percentage goes, the higher your LTV goes as well. Yeah, so out of my 114 ETH, looks like even with paying refinancing, paying it off, I would get a total sent to the new lender of 44 out of 115, 114. That sound right? It's about 40%-ish in kind, yeah. roughly. Yeah. And again, these are based on a lot of assumptions we had to make because we haven't gotten the right info, you know, yada, yada, yada. But you know, I think it's fairly accurate. Okay. Um, and then the other question I had was, I know I heard the discussion around the tax forms. Do you anticipate them issuing anything to determine, you know, the haircut or what we actually lost here to be able to take the deduction? Probably not. That you would have to do on your own. So uh, they can kind of figure it out and report that as the loss associated with this bankruptcy. So if you're setting off your loan, it becomes very complicated, very hairy. If you're refinancing or paying it off, it becomes, you know, relatively easier. Simple way to look at it. You paid off your debt and you only got back whatever, 40% of your uh, collateral back. So the 60%, whatever your cost basis is, whatever number of coins that is, let's say it's 10 coins, that's just a capital loss. Yeah. So, times, so it makes it a little, cost basis. what makes it a little, and which I do plan on refinancing, so it'll make it easier. But my original cost basis for the coins is down around three, $400. So it's a huge, you know, basically no loss looking at it from that perspective. But you all have the a gain. coins, yes, right, exactly, yeah. have a gain. But all the coins Celsius paid me for the year and a half I was there through the weekly distributions, those were priced whatever that price was on that Monday that it got paid, right? So the last two years of 1099s that I received from Celsius, I paid taxes on that as income because that's what they paid me. But realistically now, I'm not getting that. I'm only getting, say, 40% of that, right? Or I guess first in, first out. You know, my coins have the low cost basis, but what Celsius paid me, has a much, much higher cost base. Most of that was paid out during the times of Bitcoin in the, you know, 50s, 60s or so. Yeah, it's, a, it's the gripe we all have, basically. But unfortunately, the process, it is what it is. It's no good news there. But that sounds, from your perspective, it sounds right. I should be able to use the cost basis for the stuff they paid me at a much higher price to offset my... Uh, Sorry, I, I, I got a call. Can you just... Say that again. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to see if, if I'm thinking about this correctly, that the coins that Celsius paid me at a much higher cost, I'll be able to take that amount and use that as my cost basis for that portion because I never yes. withdrew them, right? Yeah. So, so, I mean, I could make the case that what I received back was from, you know, my coins I deposited, but not with what Celsius paid me that I lost. So my cost basis was whatever, all the taxes I already paid. Yeah. So, so it's, it's a little bit tedious, but what you can do 
is if you get the, uh, I forgot what they call it, but Celsius has a spreadsheet with all of your transactions for each coin. And it's basically a manual process. You have to, uh, you can look at what price you deposited each coin, and then you can use that as your cost basis. But it's kind of tricky. It's probably not the best way to do it. I mean, like I said, you'd have to talk to your accountant, CPA on how to do that, but it's... it's so it's if difficult. I transferred one, if I transferred one Bitcoin from my custody wallet, I mean, uh, from, you know, Ledger to Celsius on a day that Bitcoin was 44000 that's my cost basis, not the 300 bucks I bought it at eight years ago. So if you... So if you use the uh, the accounting or the software like Coinly and uh, Coin Tracking and all those, I have not. No. So the way- I mean, my, my transactions have been pretty simple. I just, you know, I I have been over the years just selling. So you know, so the way fifty fifty thousand worth and telling the accountant, and he would just you know report that. So the way they structure it, which is probably the correct way, when you withdraw onto like your cold storage, financially it's kind of like a sale. That is a taxable event. So if you've maintained that process all the way through, then you can do it that way. Otherwise, you have to just look at all the times that you bought, keep track of the price each time, and then you have to go off of that. But you have to be able to prove it no matter what. So however you yeah, want to I mean, do I never it. bought crypto. I never bought crypto at Celsius. I've only transferred it in over time yeah. from my ledger. So however you want to do it, there's a, probably a lot of ways to go about it. Uh, you, you have to just keep in mind that there is the chance that you will one day get audited and you just have to be able to prove that the prices you're giving are accurate in some way and consistent too. Does that make any sense? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, it becomes more difficult when you got your coins in 2013, 14, right? Yeah. So that's, <laughs> that's why we were fighting so hard for the refinance option because, you know, like I think Zarin did the same thing. It would be impossible to figure out, you know, things like that. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. I mean, that's most of the reason I would refinance is to avoid the tax implications of that. Plus the fact that I think a year from now, Bitcoin will be at a higher price than it is today. So, yeah. um, So those are, those are one of the things that you don't want to, you don't want an answer until you're ready to get the answer, right? Like if you decide in 10 years, you're really, you're willing to, you know, you're ready to sell then you can take your time and figure it out. But right now, with everything going on, we're not really sure how much we're going to get back. We're not sure how much the shit co is going to be worth. We're not sure what the liquid assets are going to get us. There's like a billion different variables. There's there's like tax loopholes with, or well, potentially with theft loss and all this other stuff, forced conversion. There is some, this, they didn't focus on taxes nearly as much as they should have, but this thing is a clusterfuck when it comes to taxes, which is why... We didn't want to have to deal with it so that we could just refinance and just keep it moving. When you refinance, whatever amount you lost times your cost basis, that's your, you know, in this case, loss, I guess, technically. And I know we, we, we have the uh, the guy from Salt on because I was originally, you know, putting an application with Salt to do the refinance, but I didn't see it on the paperwork, but I heard there's an option where you can not make your interest payments and just add them to the principal that's due. Is that accurate? That that's correct. So that's an accrued interest option. It doesn't present itself when you first go through the platform. It's a newer feature uh, that we're working one on one with people who are interested in that product. So that would be a loan ops question. I, I think we've spoken before, so we could definitely circle back up on on the particulars. Facts and circumstances are best for you, but that is correct. There's an option to accrue the interest for the benefit of the same same problem scenario that people have, which is we need to deal with this later by time. That's a true statement in a lot of elements, and that's one of them is the interest payments. Okay. Yeah. And again, my biggest factor for doing that is one, if I got to make the interest payments, it's a lot of cash flow going out every month. Just for that perspective, although I think, you know, if Bitcoin does go back to its all time high or slightly higher, you know, it's it's kind of worth it to to then potentially sell next year or the year after some of it to pay back the principal plus accrued interest. Yeah, but it's, it's important when you have the optionality to do that. Yeah. Hopefully in a year, two years, three years, whatever, uh, there's going to be more clarity on, on all of this stuff. You know, right now, nobody really knows what the IRS is thinking, what they're going to do with crypto. So you're kind of just like forced to make a decision on something that isn't even finalized. Yeah. And the LTV with Salt, I know my paperwork goes to like 50%, but, you know, using this calculator, um, my one loan is at 52.3. My other loan's at 65 LTV. I'm assuming that's not a problem. 
No, so it's going to come down to, I'm not speaking for salt, that in this in the LTV scenario, it's going to come down to the total amount of payoff. So the loan goes away. And then for the new loan, the total amount of collateral is transferred over, either all from Celsius retail borrower obligations, earn claims, and or any additional uh, payments that you make or collateral that you deposit, that we can work with you to get the proper calculation of what that looks like. The, the estimator calculator that everybody's been using is pretty close to accurate, uh, assuming that there's still there's always the unknown on every circumstance that you might have that others don't, like if you have the ability to add additional collateral or not. But we're being very flexible in this situation to, to provide flexibility to get people established without the risk of liquidation and to make sure that LTV thresholds are all safe. Obviously, that's been but you have to, one of the you, main you have to start your So when you, when you fund the loan, you have to start with an LTV of 50%. No, that's that's not correct. It was our normal standard process was seventy percent. Um, we've moved it up to eighty three percent for this um, and making considerations. You know, we're basically pricing in if there's people who need to have consideration or time in order to get the LTV lower. Those equations have obviously been helped quite a bit with the recent increase in the price of Bitcoin. But the concern is still making sure that everybody's healthy. Uh, but the the fifty percent might be if somebody else's offer. Okay, I just in my paperwork I just saw fifty percent as the LTV, but yeah, I mean, that's fine as long as there's flexibility there to work with even 55 or 60 percent LTV based on the crypto that Celsius will be sending you. For sure. And that loan, right. that the paperwork you're looking at could be your first estimate. So depending on what you put in for collateral that you were estimating or maybe the loan ops put in, that's a starting point for the calculator. But ultimately, the final loan document that'll be signed, you'll have to sign it at the end of this when we schedule the, qual the coordinated closing. We'll have the final numbers, uh, and then it'll be a moving target from there since the price is always moving. Yeah, so this was just the application paperwork that had loan disclosures, and that's and that's at this point. That's right. All right, thank you. All right, I think it's Ciro next. Ciro Fadir, white guy with a blue background, black t-shirt. All right, Mr. S. Hey, I have a... Hi, guys, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I didn't realize I was muted. Uh, yeah. Hi, thank you. Sorry, it's... I didn't realize I was muted. I'll try to go to the to the point quickly. Thank you for for what you guys are doing. Uh, I'll give you my my case. I'm trying. I understand the difference between set off and, and repaying the loan is mainly taxing taxes information. But I wanna I wanna present a case to you and see if I'm thinking of it correctly. So in my case, I had 14 Bitcoin and a loan of 120 thousand. So roughly, I had 280 thousand dollars. I had to pay them 120, that's me at 160. And if I understand correctly, I will, uh, let's say, 30% of that 160. And for the sake of argument, at Bitcoin at 40, that's roughly a Bitcoin, a little bit more than a Bitcoin that I will get, correct? Can you just say those numbers one more time? I'll punch it in here. So 14, I have 14 Bitcoin and I owe them 120,000, which leaves me at 160. They owe me 160. And I will get, I'm assuming, 30% of that 160, right? Which is a little bit over $50,000, which is at today's price, one Bitcoin, a little bit over a Bitcoin, correct? So are you planning to refinance or just set off? So I'm trying to decide because my question is, if I if I go with Mauricio, for example, with Leden, and I refinance, if I don't have the money, basically it's an option for me to get a loan to buy Bitcoin today. If I don't have the 120 today, this gives me the option to basically get a loan and buy Bitcoin at the price of, of today. So let's, again, for the sake of argument, let's say Bitcoin is at 40. So let's, and, okay, so let's yes. do, so at 46K per Bitcoin, that's around 75-ish percent distributions. Right, these are estimates. We're not really sure, yada yada yada. But let's say it's seventy-five. If you refinance, yeah. you will get roughly five and a half Bitcoin in your loan. Your LTV will be around fifty percent. Uh, you will still owe lead in one hundred twenty thousand. Just at a later date, you'll get like thirteen thousand worth of shitco stock, and then a mm -hmm. bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. Versus, if you just elect a set off, you will get a two point eight ish Bitcoin, but that's going to be split up between Bitcoin and ETH, right? Because now it's an mm -hmm. earned claim, and you'll still get the roughly thirteen thousand in shitcoin and the other stuff. Okay, so according to your numbers, thank you. According to your numbers, basically, I can buy roughly three bitcoins if I refinance, because I will keep five over five bitcoin instead of the two point eight that you mentioned. Yes. However, if you set off, you're gonna have potentially. I don't know about your situation, but there are potential tax consequences. Right. Right. Okay. 
So in, the, in that case, this is an opportunity. Refinancing is an opportunity in the long term for me to keep more Bitcoin than I would, assuming that the price of Bitcoin will go up and, and then I would pay lead on or salt or I don't know who else is here. I have to do my due diligence on which platform will be best, but it's a, it is an opportunity for me to keep more Bitcoin than just going for the setup, correct? Yes, yes. It's an opportunity. However, you have to understand that there are risks involved. Right. Because now you're, you know, you, you, I'm not saying you will, but potentially, you know, you could have a liquidation, we can have a cascading, you know, prices falling, things like that, having a little yeah. time. Uh, so, so you're taking more risk to potentially get more back in the future. I understand. I understand. Thank you. So it's not, not risk free. No, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Right. If, if, if Bitcoin goes down, then I'm, I could be liquidated and lose everything versus keeping what I would get today. Thank you you'll, so much, guys. You'll still have Shitco stock. Oh, yes. So so it's not all bad. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll let me let the next person. Thank you. All right, Mr. S. All right. To avoid uh, liquidation and to get some tax benefit, how do I accomplish refinancing just half my loan or one of several loans and then set off the rest of the loan? I don't know how you would go about doing that. I'm not entirely sure. Sean? Or well, yeah, wouldn't that wouldn't that just be so my, yeah, my question my question is both for on that form because the form doesn't look like I can do that and then also if it's possible with the lenders what they thought. So can you from the, yeah from the lender perspective we're prepared to refinance whatever amount is needed, whether it's the full amount, partial amount, or additional amount, say for people that want extra cash out. If if your question is specifically about how to do it on the form, it could reach out to Celsius directly. I'm happy to help with that process, but maybe just clarify that a bit further from the, from our standpoint, Salt speaking here, that's no, no issue whether it's the amount you're paying off. It would just be coordinated as far as how it's going to flow from the, can you clarify if you're just talking about the form on how to fill that out? Well, I'm talking about both if, if it's possible in the process of the lenders and also the form doesn't look like it's possible. Are you able to click both of the boxes? Well, that's a good question. It has these ors there though. Let me see. I could try. So what? We voted on and then use it last second. So they can do whatever they want. You can click both boxes, but it has ORs. Well, tell them you didn't see the ORs. They're going to reach out to you. And then uh, just tell them I want to do both. I don't. That's a good question. I really don't know. But that's that's the approach I would probably take. Okay. Yeah. Because, I mean, I just don't want to be liquidated. And I need some tax benefit. But I can take like half the loan. So. So. Hold on. So, so you want to pay off some of it yourself and then refinance the rest? No, no. What I want to do is I want to refinance half the loan and then have the other half set off. Yeah, I thought you wanted to do half and half, half payment, half refinance. If that's the case, you can just click refinance, and then when it comes down to the lender, you can just work it out with them, and then they can they can they can handle the hard part with Celsius on the back end. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so the lenders will return because it says that. The liquid crypto will get, I won't get it. So it'll go to the lenders. So I guess we'll have to work it out with the lender. No? So procedurally, right? Let's say you owe a thousand bucks. Uh, if yeah. you only refinance 500 through SALT, let's say, um, yeah. they will send 500 worth of whatever to SALT and then the rest it would set off. So I think it would work the same way. I see. I see. So it, you think the refinancing election will, will accomplish what I'm trying to do? It was supposed to. They didn't word it the way. The, so, so part of... I don't know if I'm allowed to even say that, but whatever, who cares? Part of the discussions were, you know, if the LTVs go crazy, can we refinance a portion of it so that we don't have the giant tax gain, even if we get hit a little bit of a taxes? Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we were told, I was told yes, specifically. The format of this uh, election docket document doesn't really show that, but I don't think that's an issue. I don't see why it would be. Right? They just want some of their money back for all of it, but. If they only get some of it, they're going to give you the equivalent back. Okay. It doesn't. You. It doesn't change your uh, distributions, so it doesn't affect the uh, doesn't affect the, the estate pretty much. I think I'll go with the refinancing checkbox then. Yeah, just go to refinance, and then when you when you pick your lender, when you're working on the paperwork with them, just let them know you know whatever amount you want to refinance. Hey, can I explain to you for a couple minutes? I, I missed a part of the conversation, but I'm back now, and I understand that I want to give a quick overview on the capabilities of each of the lenders, is that right? Uh, yeah. My mind yeah. Is kind of summarize or, or reiterate what my, my colleague may have mentioned, so. There's there's a little bit of an echo. I'm a little bit is that better? Still an echo. Right? So, obviously, you've just been thinking the restructuring of the company, and I think that's a good thing. 
it was all around this lending platform, right? Like, and that was the key in my perspective is to reinstate the, the, the business. Unfortunately, really see our, our same uh, lens, but I've been fighting for you guys, you know, for the last year and a half. And so I uh, continue to try to fight for you guys and, and do what's right here at Figure. And the reason why I'm here at Figure is, is to build this business. And it's, the reason why I think this is important is threefold, right? So one, we've had the good benefit of studying the industry for the last year. So we know what the prior you know, they've done wrong and we're in states. So the most important thing is that we have a relationship with the uh, OCC regular custodian to make sure that your assets will stay safe with their your property that you have obligated full stop. Uh, number two, uh, figure has all the lending licenses like they are a originator. So if I, so if I originates loans, figure originates loans with loans in our history, the two hundred engineers, service loans, this is our butter. This is not a startup. This is a big real company. Uh, it's raised over two hundred sixty million dollars of equity capital. It's equity capital to date was eight billion dollars of loans that originated and sold. And I mentioned the, the tech aspect. The tech team helped us. Uh, again, five hundred employees. Big real operation. Our business is the bread and butter business. This is our your business. The structure is there. It's very complementary. And third, and most importantly, is our relationship with providers because we have deep relationships. In TriFi, which I know some of you guys may not appreciate, but if you want to borrow dollars, you need someone to give you those dollars. We know where to find them. the real institutional capital providing the surety that we have the money to lend you, uh, and then we don't borrow it from poor credit quality parties to provide you with that capital. Uh, so that's like this is a great place and a great platform. I've worked with like now and a half, and after working with them for a year, there's a reason why I'm here, right? But the quality of everyone on the staff is top notch, and I hope you guys choose to figure by. Thanks, Mike. Uh, if, if you guys didn't hear, that's Mike Abate. He was uh, one of the uh, co-founders of Nova. You know, the good old days when we were part of the Wolfpack and they get 85% in kind. Right. He tried. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. You know, we appreciate you, Mike. You know, bankruptcy is a, it's an ugly business. We've all found out. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to a new chapter. Yeah. So uh, who do we have next? I think Daftoshi. Daft all right. Yep. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Is there a deadline for, I mean, I know the, I think it's on Wednesday for filling out the form sent out by Stratos, but unfortunately I have, a, what's it called, a preference exposure. And I know that, what's it called, I would have to wait. If I do decide to refinance the loan, I would have to wait until after that's settled. Uh, but is there a deadline, I guess, from any of the lenders here as far as things that we would have to do to make sure that, uh, I guess, we submit anything so from the from the lender standpoint not, i mean i don't want to speak for them but from the lender standpoint uh, it really doesn't matter it's just a matter of when it happens but from our standpoint and from the debtor standpoint you have to fill out this uh, election whatever you want to call it by the 17th right right 17th so if you so you have to make up your mind if you want to refinance pay off or set off if you want to refinance but you got to deal with your uh, clawback situation just fill out the form hit the refinance uh, box and then uh, you gotta just kind of let the process play out got it so i just i guess i get to it when i get to it after yeah. submitting the form i mean even if you are 50 50 on the refinance you know just hit the refinance button and then you can figure it out down the road right if 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 you know a week two weeks three weeks from now you decide i don't want to refinance you know you're not like they're not going to hold a gun to your head and force you to start a new loan you know yeah that makes sense but they will set you off yeah post litigation i guess yeah 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 cool you you won't unfortunately if you hit refinance you won't be able to repay yourself i think maybe i don't know this is very ambiguous i guess we, we would have to <laughs> cross that bridge once we get to it and figure it out yeah yeah, yeah. cool no uh, that's it for me thank you all right i don't remember if it was tim alec or daniel lomax so first one First one that I can wait. Here. I can wait. Go ahead, Daniel. I uh, appreciate it, man. I, this one should be pretty quick. It's for Sean. Just those of us that aren't comfortable with the high LTV that are kind of putting some additional money in the uh, the platform to start the loan at a lesser amount. Is Are we able to wire transfer or does that need to be a stable coin to, uh, to be able to have that at the origination of the loan? Yeah, no, we can take wire transfer. I can get you the details for wire or some loan ops can get you the details for wire transfers. Stable coins okay. or wire transfers are acceptable. Okay, awesome. Just kind of email the lending team, or what do you want me to do with that? Yeah, I, I'll note you right now too, just to the flag. But e emailing salt uh, support at salt or loan ops at salt. Any of the any of the interactions you've had prayer will work. Okay, good deal, man. Appreciate it. Hey, thank you.
appreciate you. Hey guys, it's Tim. So I apologize if some of this has been covered, but I, I'll, I'll try to ask quickly. So on the set off versus the payoff, am I correct in assuming that if I set off, it's going to be 130% of my crypto being that it'll be treated as earn and we would be reduced to 70% or how does that work? Like, what are the advantages to the payoff versus the set off simply just by percentages? So there's like 12 different ways I can answer it. Uh, yeah. From a financial standpoint, meaning how much more dollars or, you know, they'll say dollars are in your pocket. It is identical financially. From a structural standpoint and how much uh, Bitcoin you get back versus uh, ETH versus do you have a 1099 form coming your way? Do you have a taxable gain? There are massive differences. So if you choose to refinance, you have a, you know, I don't know your personal tax situation, but you have a relatively easy, in quotes, easy tax situation to figure out. You had a debt to Celsius and Celsius had a debt to you, right? You owe them back the principal that you took and they owe you back the collateral that they got from you. So if you refinance, you meet your obligation, you pay your debt, and then unfortunately, they don't give you the full amount of collateral that you were owed. So if you- Yeah, sorry to cut you off. The, the question was really more along the lines of on the on the set off side, they're basically setting off more than 100% to cover your, to cover your principal, correct? Yeah, I'm not sure where you got that. Um, well, because so, because if it's if it's being treated as earn, right? Like, it, so if I if I have a hundred thousand dollar loan and I pay it the hundred thousand and I get that equivalent back, I'm really going to get seventy thousand, correct? No. Okay, right, then here, I'm not me, understanding this at all. All right, so I'm going to kind of explain this like six times already, but I'll do it again. <laughs> all right, so the loans are structured uh, at least the the, the payoff or set off uh, portion of it. It's it's basically two steps, right? The first step is how we're going to handle the principal. Second step is how we're going to handle the excess collateral, meaning the collateral that is there minus the principal. Uh, Celsius lost our collateral. So all we have is a dollar amount as of the petition date that they owe us back for that collateral, unfortunately. So if you pay off your loan, right, they will give you 100% of that amount back in crypto. So if you, whatever, let's say $100 loan, you give them $100 to pay off the loan, they will give you $100 worth of Bitcoin, let's say, in return. Okay, understood. Then on, then on the, on then on the second, right? yeah, on the outstanding part, the excess yeah. collateral, whatever the petition day value of your collateral is, minus the principal amount, that is your claim. So you will get a percentage of that claim back. Uh, we don't know the percentages. We have deduced that it will be around 70-ish percent as of today's prices. Uh, there's a lot of assumptions there. They might be right. They might be wrong. We haven't gotten those hard numbers yet from Celsius, but as of right now, it's kind of the best we got. So you will get roughly 70% of that dollar amount back in. And we won't know the actual number till the day of. It gets locked in, I believe, 15 days before the effective date. Okay. And then my last question is, I'm not really a fan of PayPal. I actually think I might be banned from PayPal. I'm also absolutely banned from Venmo. I tried to set up a Venmo account. 10 years ago, sent $5,000, they instantly banned me. What are my options other than PayPal and Venmo to receive the collateral? I'll, I'll tell you that one. You have to actually be banned from PayPal. So they'll actually send you a code and uh, you connect that code. And if they decline your account, uh, then you'll get then you'll get dollars via Strata. There's no options if you're from the US. So you, there is no Coinbase option for US customers, only for European? No. Yeah, not just so, European, international. But yeah, the US, you it. have one choice, which is PayPal. They'll send you a code. You enter that code. And uh, if they reject your account, then you'll be distributed dollars via Stretto. So you're saying Stretto would, would distribute directly? Yeah, they'll send a check. They've got a whole check distribution service. No, but I mean, aren't they distributing crypto or are you saying they're distributing dollars? No, no crypto. It'll be dollars that you get. Unless, if you don't, if you get rejected from PayPal, you're in dollars with Stretto, unfortunately. So then they'll just convert at the market price that day? No, the same amount is. Uh, but doesn't that fluctuate based on the price of Bitcoin? No, it'll be once there's a plan effective date. Uh, well, okay. your claim is fixed. Your claim was fixed at, at bankruptcy date. Right. Okay. So, but either way, it's it's not like there's not going to be any options. They have to figure no, out a no way option. to pay. Yeah. If you so, refinance, though, it will go to uh, whatever lender you choose. So, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't know this. I thought that if I paid off my loans, that my collateral would be distributed back to me 
in Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, you've got to go through the whole formula that, that uh, Tony, went, Tony went through with you. There's, it's not quite that simple. Your call's not coming back. You're, you'll get an earned claim back after, after you do the whole treatment and decide how you're going to do it. So it is coming back in dollars, not in crypto. Well, this is this is this distinctly different if you're paying off the loan with a lender that's going to refinance it, or if you're extending to a new loan, that's going to be different. I just plan to pay off my loans cash, wire them, and that was my third question: is you know how how safe or risky is this? If I you know wire these people two hundred fifty thousand dollars, you know how quickly am I going to get all of my collateral back plus that initial money? Uh, in terms of timing, you've got to pay it off like uh, whatever the deadline's there, Tony said. And then there's going to be distributions around about or shortly after the 31st of January. Okay. And if you're doing a refi, risk? then then that depends. But yeah, if you're doing cash, it doesn't. So if I pay off the loans in cash, and I'm sorry to ask the same question, but I'm still unsure. What, am I receiving cash from Stretto or crypto from Stretto? So if you pay off the loan, it will go to, uh, you're in the US, right? Yes. So it will go to PayPal. And if you're banned from PayPal, then you will get a check in the mail. You're saying the cash will go to PayPal? No, the crypto will go to PayPal, and then you can withdraw the crypto from PayPal. Got it. And if I don't, if I can't use PayPal, then they're going to send me a check for for cash. Yeah. Oof, that's a horrible situation. Or 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 if you're refinancing it to a new lender, then you pay that loan off, then you get the crypto sent to you. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to refinance. I just want to pay and keep my crypto in kind. And then you'd have to refinance. Crypto. Yeah, that's not yeah. an option. It, if, unless you've got PayPal. You've got to get PayPal sorted for that. Yeah, if you can't use PayPal, your next best option is to just refinance with whoever you choose. And then you can just pay it off that first month. Yeah, but there's aren't there loan origination fees and all those other things? Interest? I mean, would you rather have a taxable event? <laughs> no. So you're saying I'm forced into a taxable event if I can't use PayPal? I think so. Got it. And that's horrible that they don't have another option for us. Well, they do, but you would have to refinance. Yeah, I mean, we're providing another option, many of yeah. us, but it's, uh, you know, we can't do it for free. Right. Right. Yeah, they're taking okay. massive risks as it is. I mean, so just just look at it from the lender standpoint, right? They are required to come up with an undisclosed amount of cash that we won't know for a while so that they can refinance an undisclosed amount of loans that we won't know until the time comes to then receive an undisclosed amount of collateral that we won't know. I I, I understand. I understand my situation is a little different. I mean, I want to pay off my loans. I have the cash to do it. But the only reason I want to do that is because I want to keep my crypto. I want to keep it distributed to wherever i want it to be so call up call up paypal tell them i'm sorry and then... okay i'll try that right, we got tribe uh, leader hello thanks for you guys of time can you hear me yes uh i just joined the, the chat right now and i know you guys have been explaining all this several times over and over and over i'm so sorry for repeating again some of this stuff so if i decide not to pay um uh, the, uh, the actual loan Basically, they're going to go ahead and take the X amount uh, from the total collateral and they're going to pay off the loan and the remainder is going to go into my earn amount and then I'll get a fraction of that into my PayPal as a U.S. resident, correct? Yes, very much. Now, the other thing is my loan, the collateral was in Zcash and uh, Cardano. It was never a Ethereum or Bitcoin. So in my thought process, you know, if I am to pay off, so... It's not going to give me back Bitcoin. Uh, uh, it's not going to give me back Zcash and Cardano. It has to give me back Bitcoin and Ethereum. This means conversion from Cardano and uh, Zcash as the collateral into the Bitcoin Orium for the PayPal. And that right itself, right there, is that conversion is a taxable event from my understanding. Since I did not put a collateral as Bitcoin or Ethereum, am I not regardless going to be taxed? Yeah, you're pretty much going to be taxed regardless. There is potential tax loopholes. Again, you got to talk to your CPA, tax attorney, yada, 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 about, uh, you know, forced conversion. I can't explain it in enough detail because I don't know that much. I have a very, very layman's understanding of it. But basically, Celsius forced converted your uh, coins into a different asset. So it would, again, it's more complicated than I'm describing, but it would essentially reset your cost basis to that new asset without the tax event. It's well, super complicated. I wouldn't know how to walk you through it. No, I, I mean, I understand. Tax. But my question is, this whole point of paying the principal is to avoid tax. Am I right? Otherwise, they're just going to go ahead and remove the money, pay the uh, principal. I mean, why go through all these uh, refinancing and all that business if 
if it's not to avoid the tax. Am I correct? Yeah, pretty much. And so if so, all of this is just going to be helpful only if my in my collateral was Bitcoin or Ethereum. If my collateral was not Bitcoin and Ethereum, am I correct to assume that none of this is going to make any difference? Financially or tax wise? Tax wise, it wouldn't make any difference. And so financially, it's basically I either pay the hundred dollars that I owe. Or they're going to subtract the hundred dollars that I owe. What is the difference? The difference is they are selling your asset at the value that they were at their value at the petition date to pay off that debt. So if you got it, I don't know what I forgot what coins you said, but Cardano, right? Right. So if you got it at a super low price, now you have a tax gain, and if you bought it at a super high price, now you have a tax loss. So they're selling they're selling your 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 collateral at whatever the value was at the petition date to pay off your debt. So that would be a tax event. So basically, I may actually benefit from the tax loss by actually reporting a loss. Potentially, but they may also give you a 1099 for the principal amount. They say they won't. I don't believe them, but that's a risk you would have you would be taking. 1099 would indicate a, not a gain but a loss because if Cardano was it would worth, be a, was worth it would be a less 1099 or, or more. It would be a 1099 gain on the principal. It depends on how their bankers view it. And and depends on the price of the card and on the Zcash at the time, correct? Yes. Well, it depends on your cost basis, mostly. As judged by the amount that I put in at the time that I put in into the Celsius. Say that again. But the- as as, uh, as, as uh, calculated by the amount of Zcash and the Cardano at the time of input into the Celsius platform. It depends. If that's how you handle your taxes, then yes. But if you only go off of your purchase price, then that would be no. So again, it's a very uh, specific tax question that you know I, I wouldn't really be able to answer. You'd have to talk to uh, whoever prepares your taxes. Thank you. So uh, my last question, and I thank you so much for all your time. I appreciate it. Is the bottom line, I have to basically see what was the price of the card and or the Zcash and see how much of a benefit or, a, you know, disadvantage I would have depending on that tax-wise. Otherwise, the, what they're going to do is they're going to take the amount of that $100 that I would owe uh, based on the pricing of the uh, those two coins at the time of bankruptcy. And that's basically what I need to work on in this decision making. That's the bottom line, correct? You said a lot of stuff there. You kind of lost me a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead and say yes. All right. Well, all right. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, Lewis? Yeah, just uh, real quick. On the previous question, not not the last one, the one before that, uh, on the FAQ that was sent out, there's tw- those 12 pages by Strato. There's actually a section on PayPal and uh, Venmo. There's a, there's a question that asks, what if I've been banned from PayPal and Venmo? And it says that in that case, you might be able to get distribution through Coinbase. So I don't know if that previous person is still here. They might want to check out that FQ. I think you have to reach out to them in advance. And it's only in the cases where they've been banned. So just wanted to add, add that in there in case that helps other folks thinking through it. Yeah, that definitely helps. One question, one question on my side, I don't know if you guys know. So if there is, if you have, let's say you have a Bitcoin loan, you pay off that loan, you request it back in Bitcoin. Will you get Bitcoin or do you get Bitcoin slash ETH in the distribution? Or is the Bitcoin slash only for the setup treatment? I'm pretty sure it's only for set off. Got it. That's all I had. Thanks so much. Because the whole point of uh, the structure we have in place is to not get taxed. So if they give you half Bitcoin, half ETH, that's a taxable event. Essentially. Exactly. So it wouldn't make sense for them to do that. And if they try to, you know, obviously we'd be fighting. Awesome. Thank you so much. And it's not like we're BFFs anyway, so who cares? All right. That's Stoker. Can you hear me? Yes. Good to go. Uh, thanks for uh, your patience and answering all these questions. Mine is quick. Do you guys know if PayPal actually accepts trust accounts? I have a trust account with Celsius that's got loans. Yeah, that I don't, I don't really know. I assume they do, but you would have to probably open up a new PayPal account with that trust. Okay. I think so. I don't know. That's a good question. I have that same question, but I, I don't really know. I think Lewis might. Let me bring him up. Real quick on that trust account, check out the FAQ as well. They have uh, some sections around commercial accounts. And the answer, I think, is maybe in, if it's you have over 100K and you have to reach out in advance. But check out the FAQ that Strata put up. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Well, all right. I think that's it. I don't have any more questions. Anybody got questions? All right. Well, I guess we're going to close this up. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Sean, uh, Mike, David, he's not here anymore. Everyone had to leave. But, you know, thank you guys for uh, joining us. Hopefully, we answered all the questions we can. Looks like we got one more guy. All right. It's all you. Thanks for hosting. MSF.
Yeah, my question is, how is this? I'm trying to wrap my mind around it. I, I had, let's just say, a one Bitcoin loan uh, roughly at the top of the market is when I initiated the loan. Um, I'm wondering how is a taxable event if I were to pay off my loan and receive less crypto back? So essentially, you would meet all of your, I'm uh, not a CPA, you got to talk to your accountant, but uh, the way I view it, you would essentially be paying off all of your obligations to Celsius and then in return, Celsius shortchanges you on the collateral you get back, right? You said, uh, let's say, let's say you have one Bitcoin in collateral and they only give you back, let's say 0.5. So 0.5 Bitcoin times whatever your cost basis on that coin is, is, is your capital loss. Okay. I'm following. And that's it. That's your taxable event. It would be a loss in this, in this particular. Gotcha. Scenario. Okay, good. But, but if you didn't pay off the loan and you got the set off, you would have multiple tax situations going on. Right. Again, uh, CPA, yada, yada, yada. But so you would have multiple tax situations. So the first one occurs because they take your collateral, they sell it at 20,000 per Bitcoin, and they use that to pay off your loan. So whatever your cost basis is, now you sold those coins for 20K, essentially. So if your cost basis was low, you might have a gain. If it was high, you would have a loss, but you'd have a little bit of a smaller loss. Likewise, they may, they say they won't, but they may issue a 1099 where your debt was essentially discharged. So you might have a gain of your principal. I disagree with it. We all disagree with it because technically you're paying off your loan, but they might do that, even though they say they won't. And then if you're in this, if you're taking the set off now, whatever collateral you're going to get back, whereas before it was going to be, let's say 0.5. Now it's going to be, let's say 0 0.2, 0 0.25 in Bitcoin. And then whatever the equivalent amount is in ETH. So they sold more of your Bitcoin at the at the petition day prices. And then they gave you, you got a gain of your ETH at, I don't know, I guess whatever the effective day prices would be. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think that yeah, that right. makes sense. And then just to be clear, there's kind of three three options, the set off, pay off, and then the, uh, is the set off the don't pay? Is that the same thing? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. then the, the repay. So there's three options I have. Yeah, so you can repay yourself or you can refinance through a third party. Got it. Cool. Hey, thank you so much for taking all these questions. Really appreciate your time uh, throughout this whole bankruptcy. I've been listening in basically since uh, they filed for bankruptcy. So thank you. No worries. Glad I can help. Hi. I think we have more. I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you so much first for uh, for hosting hosting this and also your patience. So I have active loans and also I have uh, liquidated loans. So my question is that I have, for example, I have a loan that got liquidated when the uh, operation of Celsius stopped sometime May 22nd, I got loan that got liquidated sometime like June and uh, July. Do you guys know if they would also include that? So their position has been that all the loans that were liquidated were liquidated properly. So essentially all you have is an earned claim on that. It's, it's really so, so unfair because at the time no one was answering the call already and I couldn't add and I don't want to go scam, you know, like at the moment, if I send them, they might receive. Yep. yep. I agree. But uh, I mean, it's not much we can do there. They screwed over a lot of people with that. Okay. All right. Uh, Tom, I don't know how to say your last name with C. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. So again, thank you for all your time and patience in this. I missed the very beginning of the call. And, uh, and I was curious for, in filling out the form that was, uh, that was sent um, in filling out the principal amount. I assume that's the original principal amount of the loans that are, uh, that are in the system. Yes. Yeah. And then um, in terms of payments that were made towards that or interest payments that were made or, um, you know, any interest that's involved is all of that just gone. It's just whatever the face amount is, is what the, the principal number is. And then you work down from there. Yeah. So they, uh, you're talking about what's owed to Celsius. Yeah. Yeah. So they basically cancel the loans. So there is no uh, interest accruing or anything like that. All there is is just a, a debt owed, which is a principal and then a claim that we have against Celsius. Yeah. So any of the interest that was paid beforehand is just paid in and it's just done and gone. I think they refunded the first month while we were in bankruptcy, or I think maybe the pause, but everything else is pretty much a nice donation to the Christy yeah. Mashinsky <laughs> Botox <laughs> fund. Basketball tickets fund. <laughs> Basketball, yeah, courtside seats. Man, I, I mean, look, I, thank you guys so much for staying on top of this. It's so complicated. It's so crazy. And it's it's such a travesty that, you know, that this is how it's all being treated. But... Uh, but really, really appreciate the guidance through. And uh, I think you know, personally for me, the refinance is going to be the, the method, but, um, 
but man, it, it it's been quite a uh, quite a journey. Yeah, it's been rough. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tony. Sorry, I had a follow up. Uh, hold on a sec, uh, Johnny. You want to go? Yeah, thanks, Tony. Just a very brief question. I'm late to the refi game, but I've been staying up to date just because I had no intentions of refiing until uh, recently for various purposes. Anyway, Sean, this is for you, I guess. I just created my account, filled out my form. Is there anything else you need from me at this time? That's all. And same for Leaden, if you're there. Yeah, no, if you've got an account and you've filled out the loan app, we're we're on it. We're going to be processing them. them. It's, it's uh, basically a methodology of the smallest to largest. So we're going to take care of the, the smaller loans first in batches, and then we're going to go up to, and work our way up to the larger ones when it comes time to schedule the qualified closings or the coordinated closings with Celsius. But you should be in good shape. You can always reach out directly to us as well for status updates, and we'll have that conversation with you. Sales at saltlending.com or loan support at saltlending.com or support at saltlending.com or just DM any one of us, myself included, and we'll make sure that you're taking care of. Gotcha. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. All right. I think it's Bart next. Hi, guys. It's quite simple. I'm from Europe, so I assume that the refining or the refining the loan doesn't make any sense for me as I don't have any taxable events. I just want to make sure if that would be an option and what the advantage would be if I don't have any taxable events. Uh, well, if you don't have a taxable event, then there are, it's just a matter of if you want to go, I guess, long crypto. Technically, financially, the loans are exactly the same, whether you set off uh, refinance or repay yourself. Uh, there really isn't a net benefit, I guess. The only actual benefit that may or may not be there is that you're refinancing a loan and getting that principal amount at these dollars, right? So if you have, let's say $100, uh, you're buying $100 worth of Bitcoin at whatever the price is today, and you can pay that off, you know, next year or the year after where the price will be presumably higher than it is now. But that comes with risks. Okay. So, but, and if I... So the same reason, yeah. so the same reason you took the loan in the first place applies here essentially so would that mean i get my full collateral back no no the full collateral is a donation to the christy mashinsky botox fund yeah. for you know i mean we can laugh about it now but unfortunately they, they stole that from us it's just not there bankruptcy allows them to do it you know we're gonna get shit code stock instead for some of our collateral and the rest will get in, in tokens okay so we get like a quarter half back of what basically is left over ish uh, in kind or dollars in kind it's really uh, if you refinance it's like 40 ish percent again you'd still have to pay back the principal to the new lender and if you don't it is a uh, quick math here like 20 ish percent ish so i got like 25 ETH in there as collateral so in kind in kind it's roughly 25 okay okay cool thank you all right no problem. Uh, who's Tim? Yeah, sorry. I had a follow-up question and the woman that spoke kind of reminded me of this and it's something I've been trying to deal with. So leading right up literally to the lock -up, I had discussed payoffs of, of, of several loans that I had, uh, sent in money, paid off the first loan the day before the lockup, sent in funds literally that night. The next morning was the lockup. At that point, customer service stopped responding. I had sent in probably almost $70,000 just to pay off that loan. And so those funds got locked up and earn which should have never been there. There should have been in custody, but really they should have been applied towards the loan. Instead, they liquidated the loan, you know, almost two weeks later. So what happens in an instance like that when you were literally in the middle of a transaction and then their customer service just disappeared? Unfortunately, nothing. I mean, how is how can that be? Bankruptcy process. Yeah, the judge, judge allowed it. Right, but what did they do about loans that were payoffs that were in process? Nothing, they did nothing. The, the debtor claims that the loans were liquidated properly, but and the judge said, okay. And that was that? There was no follow-up? There was no... I mean, the judge said yes, so there's really not much to follow up. He voted against it, or he ruled against it. Okay. I mean, there was hope with the uh, original uh, group, but uh, once the UCC decided that they want boards, that kind of went away. Got it. So, yeah, kind of... Uh, Kind of went downhill this this space <laughs> it went very negative in the end but uh, unfortunately that's just kind of what it is right now okay understood all right i think i think that's everybody i just want to say thank you to sean salt team i i know i'm a huge pain in the ass and we were forcing you guys to do stuff that you really don't want to do we appreciate it you know we really appreciate your help like i said before you know i think it goes to you know, salt lead in figure you know it's, it really is a lot that we're asking these guys you know, they have to come up with money that they don't know how much. They have to be ready for, they don't know how many clients. 
and they don't know how much collateral they're going to get back, right? And it wasn't even guaranteed that the lend that the uh, the debtor was going to help us do this. So you know they've been putting in a ton of hours, ton of work that may or may not have amounted to anything. You know, so they're taking a huge risk by doing this. We really appreciate these guys. Uh, they they've been super helpful throughout the process. You know, if you have any questions, you can reach out to Sean, Justin. You know, you can DM the Salt uh, Twitter account. Yeah, thank you. I just want to say thank you, Sean. Yeah, Tone, thank you. It's been a it's been a long ride. You know, we all came to crypto for different reasons, but I do think that there's there's some value in all of us why we are here and sticking together and toughing it out. I can speak for myself personally, and I know this is true for everybody here. We've all we've all suffered in this experience in in tremendous ways, and so I think the best outcome is let's just stick it through. It's almost over. They'll be on to new chapters and new things, and we're here to help. We should help each other and. The best thing we could do is just find nuance and find the different use cases and edge cases and keep solving them, keep building and keep our head up. And so I, I appreciate the space. It was really good information being shared. I know it's redundant for a lot of people, uh, but I, you know, it's part of the deal. You guys have been crushing it as far as just keeping the conversation going this whole time. If there's anything else we can do to help improve the FAQs and make it a smoother ride, you know, inclusive of some of the things that have been left behind, like liquidated loans at some point in time, I'd love to talk about that. Just can't talk about it until we get past this, these first hurdles. You know, please reach out and let us know. We'll continue to work and do the best we can for you. Thank you. All right. With that said, everybody, good night. And uh, when in doubt, just remember all of your money is now sitting on Chrissy Mashinsky's face. All right. All right.